Welcome to the Dynasty Football Key. Hey, I've got a very special guest for you guys today. Hey, this guy is very savvy. He is a contributor with the FF Dynasty, and he goes by the name Big D. Hey, Big D, go ahead and say hello for it. Hello. Hey. <laughs> there it is. What up, man? Happy up? Friday. Yes, sir. Happy Friday. Yeah, hopefully everybody had the day off today, had a good one. And wanted to bring you guys. Oh, a good uh, Friday. Nice. Yeah, like man. That, like that. Yeah, yeah. Wanted to bring you guys uh, some review of some recent trades. We want to take a look at Big D's roster, check in on a startup mock draft that we're in right now, as well as ranking the quarterbacks for Dynasty and going forward, as well as a little bit of a rookie mock. So, uh, Big D, tell us uh, where, uh, you know, tell us a little about yourself, where people can find you. Yeah, I mean, this show, we got the sampler platter laid out for you folks. So uh, get ready. We've got, we got a little bit of everything. But um, yeah, myself, I I'm, I'm I normally hang around the uh, a lot of discords. I've got a little Twitter going on. But uh, most of the time, I'm I'm, um, I'm in the shadows, if you will. I do some special guest um, spots with um, uh, our, our pals over at the FFD. And, um, you know, I've been, you know, my background is I've, I've played fantasy football since 95 and dynasty football since 2016 i think so all right um been playing for quite a while on 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 all facets and um i i enjoy the game just you know um i play in the leagues um that are equivalent to crossfit which means that i play in Superflex, flex tight end premium you have to say that if you play in those leagues that's just kind okay of, <laughs> this is kind of the the rule just like if uh, back in the day when you had you did crossfit you had to say you did crossfit but no um uh so most of my leagues that i play in currently are, are tight and premium um super flex uh you know large benches lots of action taxi squads um i'm, a no, I'm on the no veto side of the train you know i, I don't okay. like vetoing trades you know i've seen too many come come back a couple years later and and uh, go back and do voting and people are like oh wow you know so yeah um so that's a little bit about me of course i'm rocking the, the seahawks here i'm on the, I'm on the yes, west sir. coast out, out in semi-sunny seattle some days and mostly rainy mo most other days so that, that's me amigo yeah hey you're, you're watching uh, sports are doing pretty good man so can't complain and uh yeah let's go ahead and jump into some trades here we've got uh, you know, and, and this is the quarterback episode, so I really wanted to focus on, hey, what are some trades around some quarterbacks that are on the higher end? We got Patrick Mahomes being dealt to for Jalen Hurts and a 2024 second round pick. We don't know exactly where that is, uh, but uh, yeah, w would you come off of Patrick Mahomes for Jalen Hurts? I, I mean, I don't mind it. I, you know, I, I think if I had... Uh... If I had, you know, maybe, maybe Brown or you know one of the, one of the one of the pieces of Philly, and I wanted to kind of double double tap that and get a little little juice extra. I mean, Mahomes and Hurts are in my in the same tier for me. I have Mahomes ranked higher, so the the second is fine uh, as a sweetener. But but for the most part, I I tend not to it, unless I have a different view on the player. So like in the Mahomes case, if I felt like he was going to drastically take a step back or something. I, I would have just stuck with Mahomes personally, but um, and, and instead of giving up my second, but um, e either side, I'm, I'm fine with. I, do, I don't really have a, um, you know, a one way or the other. I think Mahomes is typically in the top three. Not often will I see him as the top one overall because of his uh, lack of rushing, I guess. He does have some wheels, but they're not, not um, Josh Allen wheels, right? And yeah. then on the Hertz side, of course, you've got the rushing touchdowns, but you've got a lot of unknowns. The end of the season was uh, clunky. Offensive coordinator was clunky. Um, you know, the center retired. So, you know, what, what's going to go on with the tush push? They signed uh, Barkley to that big contract. So even maybe the tush push goes to the wayside a little bit and, you know, you get Barkley in there a little bit more on the yeah. line. So there's there's a lot of question marks around Hertz. Um, but again, upside wise, I think Hertz has the ability to be a quarterback one overall. Um, where I don't think Mahomes is quite there. I think he's probably two or three. I don't know if he can hit that one ceiling just because of the rushing side of things. Yeah, yeah, good points. When you know, now that I'm doing my own rankings, that's the tough part. It's like you see Mahomes <laughs> keep winning the Super Bowl, and at the same time, for fantasy, the, the points aren't as high as these rushing quarterbacks, and that's kind of what it comes down to some of these times here. And 
Uh, we'll see that here with the next player, which is going to be Josh Allen, you know, the ultimate rushing quarterback. And you'll see where I have him on the tiers. But this one's Josh Allen for Michael Wilson, or excuse me, Josh Allen and Michael Wilson for Kyler Murray, Tank Dell, and a first round pick. So, you know, Michael Wilson feels more of a, you know, just a piece that doesn't matter because we know they're going to be drafting a wide receiver. So it's really Josh Allen for Kyler Murray, Tank Dell, and a first. Uh, and keep in mind, Kyler Murray has been has one of the highest points per game of all time. Uh, you know, so his guy's pretty good, and you know, maybe he'll be more healthy this season. Which side do you like? Um, I like the take deal, uh, Kyler Murray side, just from the asset asset class. Um, you know, it says in the the little details off to the right here, it's a thirty seven uh, man roster. So yeah, deep. The, yeah, it's pretty deep. So the more more pieces I can add and. And I, I think Allen, again, you know, we just talked about on this last trade. Um, he's definitely got the – and proven <laughs> to be quarterback yeah. one overall. But Kyler Murray, uh, Ky- Kyler Murray, as you stated, I mean, he's he's no slouch. I mean, he's been injured. He's had some weird offensive coordinator situations going on there. But, I mean, the dude produces. So if I can grab him, grab Tank Dell, which is a – you know, he's, he's he came out of the gates last year. And, you know, he's a great starter. And then have that additional round one um, – 2025 20, pick. Um, yeah, I think I'm, I'm all over the Ky- Kyler Murray side. I wanted to see what I paid for um, Josh Allen. So I paid in 2022. So this was October 2022. So the end of the October 2022. So that would have been two years ago. Okay. I, yeah, I paid. I like um, looking at hindsight. Yeah, I paid two first um, and, uh, and Swift for Josh Allen. Um, so the first ended up being um, uh, or a, the 2023. I think I won that league. So that was a 112. Right. And then this it last year, paid off. <laughs> I was a runner up at 1.1, uh, 111. So it was a basically ended up being the 112 yeah. and 23, the 111, and um, Swift for, for Josh Allen. Of course, Swift was the starter in, in uh, yeah. Detroit at the time. So, you know, context matters. But um, I, I think this move here is kind of the reason why I wanted to bring it up. I think it's similar. Just you've got some Tank Dell and some round one value, and Kyler Murray is way down in the yeah in the depths of people's minds. So um, yeah, yeah, I think I'm rocking the Murray set in this one. I love it. I love it. Yeah, I think you won that trade. Just you know, if you win the title, it really doesn't matter. I have some trades that are bad. I traded away Kyler Murray and Trey McBride uh, while he was injured the year before, and I got back Justin Fields. And I ended up winning the league last year. I actually won two out of the la- three out of the last four years. But you know, I still would rather have Kyler Murray and Trey McBride over the Justin Fields. But Fields had a forty point game in the in the final week of the season, and that helped me win. So it's hard, it's hard sometimes to balance that out. But with your trade, uh, you know, the running back and all that, I, I lean your side since uh, you got Josh Allen. And this is there's some a, a lot of pieces in the this one here. This is a C.J. Stroud trades. Mm-hmm. Before we move on, and we've got Jared Goff 104 for CJ Stroud in the 112. And what I wanted to do was say with all of these, you know, who got the best uh, value in trading away CJ Stroud, and then who acquired CJ Stroud for the least amount? Uh, and I know it's a lot here, uh, so I'll read it off for the the audience. Again, Jared Goff 104 for CJ Stroud in the 112 is an option, and then we've got. Dak Prescott, Terry McLaurin, Adam Thielen, Mark Andrews for C.J. Stroud straight up. We've got the 105, 109, 112, one, or excuse me, 202 for C.J. Stroud straight up. And then we have another straight up for C.J. Stroud trade giving the 110, the 104. What value do you like getting in return for C.J. Stroud the most to start with? I think I, I think I'm partial to. I mean, I guess it kind of depends on the team build, right? So to, the trade number two, where it includes Dak, and you've got some veterans. I mean, I'm assuming they're going for it. Um, you know, the Dak to Stroud is pretty even, um, mm-hmm. and, and so the, you know, um, that's a start. It looks like our start nine with a roster of thirty, um, which which matters. I keep bringing that up because there is some context here that we can add to these. Um, yeah. I, I think the one that I probably like the most is the Jared Goff in the 104 for Stroud in the 112. Yeah, just because um, I really like 
Goff. I still think he's yeah. you know, he's going to be around for a while. I don't think um, I'm down on Stroud comparison to the market because um, he's he's kind of like Burrow and Herbert for me. I, they're great quarterbacks. They're great NFL assets. But when we're talking fantasy football, I, I'm with you. I, I like your shot for Fields because you're you're looking for upside. Yeah. You know, you're looking for for that. And so if I'm going to you know have a quarterback too, right? With Stroud or Goff, I'm okay with having Goff and then having that 104 pick because that 104 pick, I mean, you can do all kinds of magic with. Oh yeah, you know? um, it's getting really exciting. <laughs> it is, yeah. Each week it gets a little bit more exciting, yeah. you know. So, so you could definitely turn value. Um, but I, but again, a lot of the times when you look at these, you gotta you gotta think about the kind of player you are personally, right? Because we, me yeah. and you, we can talk about this all day long, but like. If I'm not a trading kind of guy, if I don't like the whole trade and get into the nitty gritty, then I'm, you know, I might go with more of a proven asset. If I enjoy trying to flip value and do all that kind of stuff, you know, I might go a, a little bit more extreme. And then there's the people that are in the middle. So I think all three of these, um, that last trade, I think, is uh, kind of a steal for Stroud. Um, yeah. The 104 and the 110 for. Uh, yeah, that was what I was going to say on the other end. Which one did yeah. you like it in? So the yeah. on the very other end, 104, 110 for Strauss. So uh, even though 104 is included in both of the ones you mentioned, you know, you're s- still, st- you know, the extra piece you're getting on top is not a Jared Goff. You're not really getting a Jared Goff at 110. Maybe one of those guys turn into Jared Goff if you take a Bo Nix or something like that who falls, maybe. Yeah. You know, but you know, especially when – you want to win, you know. I, I like that person, like you said. So let's let's move forward, man, and I, uh, let's see if we can jump into one of your trades, uh, or excuse me, one of your teams. Sure. And let's go ahead and pull that up. All right. Let's confirm. Is this your team? That's my team. All yeah. right. So Anthony Richardson, Kyron Williams, Najee Harris, Puka Nakua, Devonta Smith, Dalton Kincaid, Noah Fant. David Montgomery, Javante Williams, Gardner Minshew. We, on the bench, we've got Tyler Huntley, Mac Jones, Henry Hooker, Tyler Algier. We got Trey Tucker, Robert Woods, Adam Thielen, Zay Jones, Hunter Henry. Excuse me, <laughs> Hunter Renfro, <laughs> Renfro yeah. uh, Hardy, Atwell, Bell, Dobbs. Okay, Romeo Dobbs, Tyler Conklin, Daniel Bellinger. Oh, okay. Stetson Bennett, who I heard is going to report to camp this season. Yeah. Uh, and then Parker Washington. And then for the draft picks, we got a first, a third, a fourth, and then next year's first. Yep. So, uh, first off, I love having Richardson. It's funny that you have Richardson and Minshew. So, yeah, you, ha- you're, <laughs> you at least had someone for last year. But let me first ask, how did the last season end up? And let me move our camera just in case the folks can't see. Yeah, um, so I actually, this is an orphan I took over. Um, this is my first year okay. with it. Um, but I believe this team earned the 101, um, as you can kind of see by the roster. Um, I did do one move since I've had this team, but but for the most part, we're still we're still pretty, um, you know, pretty pretty much the same. So the the, the move that I did was uh, the David to get David Montgomery. I okay. dropped down from the 101. Uh, to the 102. Um, the reason why I did that is because I don't like having two quarterbacks that are really risky on my team. So if I so if I would have stayed at the 101, I would have took Caleb Williams. Um, I was already leaning Marvin Harrison. So in my thought, if I can get David Montgomery and Marvin Harrison, I, you know that's that was kind of a no-brainer to me. Um, I might still try to move down from that 102. Yeah. And uh, acquire some more just because this this is a two tight end starts two tight end, which is a very different uh, format yeah. for most people. I'm in one of those. Uh, yeah, so Bowers is um, a, a little higher on my board in this one. I, I think I might take him 103, 104. So, um, yeah. so yeah, but but the the main concept of this team was just okay. I, I like the bones that I've got here. There's there's some good oh, pieces. Yeah. There there's a lot of youth on here, but there's also some pieces that I can still move. And you know, get into that 2025 class. Right now, picks for 2024 are just too hot. They're too they're too high, you know. So I'm, yeah. not, I'm probably not going to do much in the 2024 class as far as moving assets to, to get that. But um, I think I can be competitive. 
I think I can add value. And, and like I said, I've been trying to see what I can do to 103, 104, do some trade back value again and, and grab another veteran or two. And then just just see where, you know, see, see where the draft takes me. Eventually, I'll probably make a play if I'm, uh, you know, if I'm competitive after the first quarter of the NFL season, I might make a play for, for a quarterback that's down. So let's say somebody who's older like Geno Smith, let's say he comes out of the gate a little rusty or. or yeah, um, it'll be you cheap know, then. Yeah, or if you got like, um, you know, sometimes there's crazy values. Like sometimes, yeah, when they're calling for Sam Howell. <laughs> Sam Howell, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, um, you know, Dak, um, I know last year he had a stretch before he went absolute um, ballistic. There was a stretch there where he was like, oh, I don't know where we're at. You know, like, so you can always, in the, in the beginning of the season, especially that, that, that first like introduction, there's always a chance to sometimes grab some great some great value if you're if you're on top of it so um yeah yeah absolutely yeah pretty young team i love how like javante is just really slept on i know he's had some injuries but only 23 mm -hmm. years old right now he's just he's like the latest running back to go at that age so i like just having the running backs in the age range are all in the prime mm -hmm. uh puka i, I just want to know did did you get him in the third round or fifth round or something like that puka yeah, I think this. Uh, I wow. think that was a fourth round, fourth nice. or third round pick. I yeah, believe. when that stuff happens, you know, it reminds you not to throw away picks. You know, I did a trade recently where I, I got a really good piece at the top, but I made sure to get a third and fourth thrown back in on the other end um, without going too deep into it. But just making sure you get some of these assets, especially in this class. Actually, actually so uh, he was added on the waiver. Uh, oh waiver my wire. god! So yeah, yeah, congrats. <laughs> Twenty twenty eight dollars on the waiver wire. So yeah, there you go. Cool, man. And the league I was saying, I ended up winning like three out of four. That's a double tight end league also. And I'm mm -hmm. also a commissioner of – the only league I'm a commissioner of is also double tight end. Um, oh, okay. Uh, for whatever reason. And it is a tough format. Is it a premium? That, those type of formats as well as like just having really deep starting lineups. It's more just about just making sure you got someone starting and you're not taking those zeros. Right. Um, well, cool, man. I wanted to – Check in on another draft that we're currently in. It's a uh, mock for the FF Dynasty, which you're a contributor with. And we've got, uh, it's all, you know, halfway through the 12th round. I'm actually on the clock. And I just picked, yeah. I'm yeah, you just you. picked. You got yeah. Jahan Dotson. Your team is Jalen Hurts, Brock Purdy, Roma Dunze, Brock Bowers, Saquon Barkley, Brian Thomas Jr., Bo Nix, Marquise Brown, David Montgomery again. Tajay Spears, Braylon Allen, and Jahan Dotson. I've got C.J. Stroud. We're right back and back to back to each other. I got C.J. Stroud, Jordan Love, Jaden Daniels, Drake London, T. Higgins, Jordan Addison, Rashad White, Cooper Cup, Terry McLaurin. I've got Mr. Schultz here, Joe Mixon. So you see, I've got the Houston stack except for the wide receivers. So if somehow I could figure out a trade in this mock. I would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, I went late on the running back, and I went early on some of these quarterbacks. Just took a two two pocket quarterbacks with one upside rusher, and it could be too early on Daniels, or it could be too late for everyone else on Daniels. We'll see in time. Uh, but I I like getting London with just a new situation, and really a lot of these receivers that I, I got, I feel good just with year one production, and uh, same with the running backs in the tight end. So I'm I'm liking my team, and with yours. I mean, I love the shot on Odunze. I think this guy could be really special. I think, uh, well, in my last video, we, he was my 14th overall wide receiver. So I'm, I'm pretty high on him for the most part. And Brock Bowers, absolutely love him, especially in this tight end premium. This is the second tight end off the board, which is where I have him in my tight end rankings. And, you know, Barkley is in a good spot. I uh, really like this team. You're, you know, first two receivers are, are Ricky, so there's a little bit of risk there. Mm -hmm. That hey maybe it takes them a little bit of time. I, that's just a, a, how it sometimes goes. We we don't know. Hopefully they hit the ground running. But both are projected to be first rounders, so I really like that. And then you got the Marquise Brown deep threat ability. Uh, you know, with these rankings, I had asked a question to you and uh, about you know you know how does it affect your ranks? And you know you can see that some people are you know want to fill out their roster a little bit, but then you got some that like a JMW who just committed to the wide receiver or Big Co who early on committed to the, the wide receiver before trying to fill out that roster. Um, what's your general strategy when it comes to startups? Do you 
try to just get BPA, best player available? Are you looking to build a competing roster early, which a lot of times actually is scooping up those older veterans, you know, as they're falling, you know, what's your strategy with startups? Yeah, for me, most of the time, I'm, I'm, um, I play mostly, uh, the Patreon leagues are a little bit, a little bit cheaper, but most of the leagues I play in now are high, high premium. They're, they're a decent dollar. And so typically I'm trying to win out of the gate <laughs> in, in those yeah. leagues, because if I could win the first year or the, or the second year, then I've, I've paid my, I've paid my dues, right. I'm on the trophy. I've paid my dues and, and I'm good yeah. for a few years and then I can start playing around. Um, but, but oftentimes it also depends on where I'm slotted in the draft, you know, how the draft's going, you know, this is a mock of course, so we, so we can't trade, but I've been in, I've been in leagues where the first like four rounds, like, I don't know if anyone picked in their spot. I mean, it was just an insane amount of trades, right? Yeah. So, so like, I, you know, I think one of the things that we say over the FFT is you, you got to stay water in, in all things, right? And, and when you're in your startup, especially, you just got to stay a little bit water and see where the values are. You know, I I noticed, um, as you said, you pointed out uh, astutely that there's a lot of um, heavy on the wide receiver. And I, I know that's a popular build right now. Let's just go heavy wide receiver and worry about your running backs later. And I completely understand that. But I, I like to then, if I see that, if I see people doing that, then I'll flip it. I'll go heavy on some of the talented running backs. And then in season, those wide receiver teams that are doing pretty good and might need some help, I, I might be able to sneak in and get, you know, for, for my running backs, I might be able to sneak in and get a, a little bit of extra value, you know, like, you know, say, say Allen, obviously we don't know where he's going to be uh, Braylon Allen uh, yeah. pick 11. I don't know where he's going to land, but let's say he lands in a, in a great spot. He goes to, you know, um, the chargers or he goes to one of those open running back spots, right? All of a sudden his value um, demands a higher asset than the, than an 11th round startup value. And then I, maybe I can, move him for somebody um i can move him for you kind of pointed out i've got rookies so maybe i move yeah. him for mike evans maybe i move him for brandon Ayuk. you know like uh you know i i'll look for those values and again that first quarter of the season it's really important after your startup drafts and then you get into the actual football season where where the ball is being thrown around the field that first quarter um you know if you're if you're paying attention to your leagues oftentimes you'll find the values and so if you yeah. have a strength and you attack that strength in a draft, um, you know, and, and, and I, as, as we talked about, I, I, I like to move around. I like to talk with people. I like to get, you know, I like to, I like to do, I, I typically am one of the top traders in my, in my league most of the time. Um, yeah, we need more so, of those. <laughs> yeah. So, so I enjoy doing that, but I've also done it for a long time and I'm not afraid to trade Justin Herbert for a second, which I did his rookie year because I just didn't really like some of the stuff that was going on with Justin Herbert. That's a fall flat on your face kind of trade right there. Justin Herbert for a second. Are you kidding me? Like I, I should have been, you know, kicked out of the league at that point, but, <laughs> but at, at the same time I flipped around and, and, and I won the league um, a year later in that, in that particular league where I traded Justin Herbert. Right. So, so like sometimes you take a shot and you, you know, you say, you, you know, you take a stance on a player and you're wrong, but that's part of the game, man. Like it's part of the game to be, Fun. And, and I'm pro championship over sexy roster. I, I'll take a, a junky looking uh, yeah. roster all day long over, you know, over one that's just high ADP value because, you know, I'm again, I'm, I'm looking to win. Like I, I play the game to have fun with my friends. I play the game to, you know, be in this community and meet great people like you. But but at the end of the day, I play this game to win and put my name on the championship. You know, yeah. I want I want that ring, I want that Super Bowl, I want that trophy, and so <laughs> so that's that's how I play the game. And so some in my and we'll talk about rankings a little bit later in the show, but that's how my rankings reflect. You know, you you talked about Justin Fields earlier. You know, yeah, now he's not in the great position that he was in Chicago, quote unquote. But I mean, if he's on the field and can give you 40 points, I mean, that's a weak winner, like, you know, and so he's yeah. going to have a higher value in my ranking. So, yeah, I've got Fields currently as quarterback. Let's see. I've got him at. Uh, looks like I got him quarterback 25 right ahead of Matthew Stafford, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr. and Geno Smith. So those are starters at least two of those that he's ahead of. And he, and I have him ahead of Russell Wilson, just purely for the upside. If you have a belief that yeah. would you, you're, it, huh? Would, would you say you had him on 25? Uh, uh, this is my rankings. Yeah. 
that's I got 20, I 20 uh, you got Justin Field 25? Yeah, yeah, that's, wow. that was funny. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, because it, just like you said, you know, I want a little bit of that upside. He he still won me a league, even though he was uh, about to get benched. And yeah, uh, and I've got him ahead of his the starter on his own team because the way it works is in this draft, Russell Wilson hasn't even been drafted, right? I have right. three quarterbacks already. Why do I need Russell Wilson on my team when I'm not ever starting Russell Wilson? But if Justin Fields ever pops off or gets another starting role, I've got him for my lineup or for a huge trade value to climb all the way up here, right? Yeah. So I actually uh, – so I'm going to make this pick, guys, and then we'll move on. I have uh, Marshawn Lloyd. I have him about – six spots in my rankings behind Justin Fields. So this is a question I want to ask. Would you take Justin Fields, who's going to be uh, – is Fields been taken here? Am I, Let me see. Do I see Fields on here? I don't know if he's on here. But uh, would who would you rather have, Lloyd or Fields? Fields. Fields. Okay, maybe, like maybe Fields they, is, he's gone. Yeah. Okay, I thought uh, he might still be there. Let's see. Um. All right. Let's see. Where's Justin Fields at? Huh? Oh, oh he's on the left the, side. Last fat. Yeah. All right. Good job. Last fat. He he didn't mess around at all. Yeah, <laughs> took he him took in the, the eighth round. Wilson so, and then the backup so he, right after it. So. so there you go. It's not even a question in some people's mind. I mean, we'll see how far he ultimately ends up falling. But uh, yeah, I like I like the shot on Justin Fields. So I'll go ahead and just take Marshawn Lloyd. And uh, just to, just since I've got you on here, Marshawn Lloyd or one of these veteran running backs like a Brian Robinson or Eckler, who one of the two is starting for the Washington Commanders. Um, I think at this point I'm probably going to lean. Uh, well, I'd probably lean Chubb and then Lloyd, but but I, I think that you know I think I would lean uh, Lloyd or I'd lean Charbonnet um, at, at this point in the draft because I'm I'm yeah, looking for some- upside. Uh, you know, I think I think Chubb is still, you know, he can still come out and produce at a high level. So he's he's high on my list. Brian, um, both Robinson and Eckler, I just don't know what's going on in Washington. I don't know how that's going to scheme out. So if I'm doing a startup today, I think I'm leaning uh, outside of Dotson, who I just took, and, and you took um, the the whiteouts, of course, and and yeah, um, the commanders still is some... different, but the running backs not so much. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, and I, I do like Eckler in theory over Brian Robinson or the pass catching ability because we saw for years they liked having that Antonio Gibson or uh, man, I'm now I'm losing the name. But who was the other scat back they had uh, before him uh, out for the Washington team uh, who was always wow. the RB2 for years? But anyway. They've always had someone in that role. Well, they always passes. bring in someone too. So they had McKissick, who came from the McKissick, Seahawks. Yeah. yeah, McKissick came over, um, and then I prior to that, they he had like a, I could have sworn he had a season where he was number two in pass catches yeah. from a running back after Alvin Kamara. Yep, uh, yeah. And it was just like for some reason that's what they love to do is have that secondary running back get all those catches. Yeah. Um, all right, so we got that pick in. Let's go ahead and move on, and. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the quarterback rankings. This is what we came here for. We're still going to have that mock draft after this uh, for the rookies. And let's go ahead and debut these picks uh, for the quarterbacks. All right. So we've got Josh Allen, number one in the Dynasty Football Key quarterback rankings. Got Patrick Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, and C.J. Stroud all in this first tier. And I've got Allen here because of the rushing upside and the fact that he's been the QB1 and the number one overall player in fantasy football for the past two years consecutively. Patrick Mahomes, uh, he is doing everything he can to get the crown as the GOAT. And I think he has the most job security of any person on the planet. It doesn't matter what the job is. I think he has the most job security. And Lamar Jackson is the current MVP. He's the the prototype for what you want as a rushing quarterback uh, with that ultimate speed and juking ability, while also the team really not able to find an answer at wide receiver. And 
you know, it looks like he's just going to keep having to use those legs. If you look at those rushing numbers, it's always double digit rushing. Uh, Jalen Hurts, he has a lot of rushing, but if you saw in the last two games of the season, he was getting banged up and there was like no rushing at all. Uh, and the tush push is still a rule, I believe. So he does have that as his disposal. They've got to say Quan Barkley. Maybe they take that away. They've never shown that they would do that. But every year they're getting better and better running back. So maybe this is the year that some of that goal. Well, I, don't, I don't think it's just Barkley. I, I, my my more so my concern is Jason Kelsey retiring. True. Um, I think it I think it stems from that from a leverage perspective. And so it'll be interesting to see who they bring in at that center. And you you got to know that Kelsey's yeah. going to come in and help that dude know how to do the tush push. So I know there's going to be some private coaching there, but there there is some question marks there. So absolutely. And, yeah, C.J. Stroud, the reason I've got him in here is because I'm also factoring in some of the value of players uh, on the market in the community. And Stroud is valued pretty highly. Excuse Mm me. Uh, Sorry about that. So, yeah, Stroud is valued very highly. And, you know, you can see C.J. Stroud, he had two fewer games than everyone else here, but in the middle-ish under passing, 4,100 passing yards. You know, the fantasy points were up there. He really did deliver, uh, even in his rookie season. So I was really impressed with C.J. Stroud and what he was able to do. So I understand that he doesn't have that rushing ability that some of these other folks have. But still, I like the value that he has on the market. I believe in the talent. And I think with the age being much higher than Uh, Some of the other folks here, I really do think that C.J. Stroud can um, deliver for us. And I'm just uh, trying to get uh, just the ability for us to see both of these at the same time. And here we go. So, yeah, I like what Stroud can do. Is this a reach on Stroud? That's what I want to know. I mean, it is for me. He, he's not in my my money tier uh, personally, but I, I can completely understand it. There's yeah, there's justification as to why he should be up that high. Um, for me, I'm 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 always a little bit hesitant after first year fire. Um, you know, that's yeah. not to say that I I I mean, he definitely proved a lot. He definitely is in in the the top ten for me. But um, I also know they didn't really have a running game um, last year. Mm-hmm. I, I like I love Singletary. Don't don't get me wrong, but the, you know I think there was um, there was times when he had to kind of push it a little bit harder than than maybe than you know um, mm-hmm. than he will going forward with some more resources on his team. And I, I'm personally not a big fan of the o- uh, offensive coordinator. I think Stroud is actually I think he outperformed with the coordinator. Really? Provided is that a hot him? take? <laughs> that might be. Yeah, that might be. I was when the Seahawks were looking for a for a coach before they hired uh, Mike McDonald. I I really 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 did not want them to hire. Um, I'm drawing a blank on his name now, but the the OC in in Houston. I I just I you know I've I've got a Houston hat I'm sitting here right right next to me. You know, like I I, I like the Texans. Um, in, Was in it Bobby ways. Slowick? Slowick, yeah. Thank you. Uh, yeah, but there was just some times on Slowick, I, I just felt like some of the way that he, he called the plays and that I think Stroud uh, either checked out or or made some amazing throws to, to save some of those play calls. So we'll see as it goes All along. Right. Slowick was a was a rookie, too. So you got to give him grace and he and they perform. So it's not like he's I'm not saying he's yeah. a horrible coordinator, but I think that we have a track record of coordinators getting a lot of uh, getting a lot of kudos and maybe not being that great, like Peyton Manning and Adam Gates. And, you know, you've got you got some people from the past that uh, you can look at, and, and the quarterback is just that good that they can carry him. So the, all that said, I just said that Stroud, I'm yeah. a little bit more hesitant <laughs> on him, but he is in that elite category where he's in the top ten uh, easy, and and you have him up yeah. here in the top five, and, you know, it's hard, it's hard to argue that. So Yeah, yeah, I love that breakdown. Really – it, what you're telling me actually makes you feel better. If it's not the OC, that means when the OC gets that head coaching job inevitably next season, Stroud's going to be just fine. Hopefully. All right. Yeah. So let's move down to the A tier. We've got Joe Burrow, Justin Herbert, Anthony Richardson, Caleb Williams, Kyler Murray, Jordan Love, Trevor Lawrence, Dak Prescott, Brock Purdy, Drake May, and Jaden Daniels. And uh, really, 
with these guys. Joe Burrow, I just love the talent. I love the talent. This guy is really good at football, and he's got Jamar Chase tied to him. I just cannot imagine them not being together for a minimum a decade because uh, once they get this next contract done, it's it's just going to be hard for them to not want to keep them together. Yeah, it doesn't matter how long the next you know five year window. I think they'll be together, and I love that combo. Oh yeah, we got Justin Herbert. Uh, and if we if you want, we can do these one by one. Uh, if you want to break no, down yeah, any of these, no, go yeah. For it. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Justin Herbert really like uh, the talent here as well. So um, there's really nothing that scares me off with the running attack that's about to come through because of. Uh, the, the offensive coordinator uh, or even the coach, you know, both are run first mindset players. I'm just going to continue to believe in the talent. They don't just get rid of every player on that, re- on that receiving core to not bring in anyone. And there's a shot that them being at the fifth overall pick, they can get someone really good, but that's not really what it is. I, I like Justin Herbert. They can easily get a, a free agent signed at some point in the future. Long-term dynasty wise. I'm good with Herbert, Anthony Richardson, Show that he could actually be the number one player in fantasy. He would have to actually stay healthy. Um, mm-hmm. That's the other caveat there. Uh, so any of the rushing quarterbacks, I'm going to have them highly. Yep. It is tough uh, without seeing a full sample size. That you know that was worst case scenario for that season, pretty much. Uh, but still, he showed enough to kind of. Ha- I was sending a lot of text messages out when I saw that one game where he had like 20 points in the first half. And then, you know, obviously he ends, he doesn't play anymore after that. But right. it looked like there was about to be a new dynasty number one player yeah. <laughs> during yeah. that game. Sheriff in town, man. He, yeah. was, he was on fire. I was like, Richardson is here. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Caleb Williams. Uh, and, uh, I like, real quick, just on Richardson. No, I, I think the thing is, 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 yeah, he got hurt on the play. But if you watch the play, he's out reaching with that arm. You know, like it, it, to me, it was yeah. kind of like a, I don't think it was because of the impact. I think it was the way that he landed on his arm when he was out, outstretched. And so I, I I think he's got a body, unlike Jalen Daniels, who you haven't got to, like he's lower in my rankings just because I don't think he's going to have the same wheels as a Richardson or an Allen okay. just because of his body. I think he's got to learn how to slide. Um, he's got to learn how to play in the pros. And so I I, I have a wait and see approach with, with Jalen Daniels. Yeah. Um, um, right. But 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 um, but Richardson and, and Allen um, Lamar, of course, he's just so smooth. Hurts. Those guys are all, you know, bigger and and they just they can uh, they can run with the best of them. Um, not just quarterbacks, but I mean, they can run with the best of them in the league. <laughs> you know, as far yeah. as power and and they all give a little bit different. So yeah, the lower body injuries. Uh, you know, how does this guy react when? It's his fourth quarter, and he is sore. His legs are getting banged up from taking hits. Is yeah. he still able to run and do what he needs to do? You know, he does need to work on his lower half of the body, get stronger to be able to withstand that, especially over the course of a season. Because hey, I don't know if you've seen some of those pictures of some of the football players, the bruises on their legs and stuff. Oh, They're yeah. pretty brutal, man. Brutal. Yeah. Uh, so a guy like this, he's going to – you're right. He's going to have to bulk up. Um, and that was going to be one of my questions. Is this a reach? I'll just fly through these because with, yeah. um, with Kyler Murray – I've, he has had some of the highest points per game of, of any player, as I mentioned earlier. So I just don't want to overlook him. I could easily see him going ahead of Anthony Richardson by the end of this season if Richardson just doesn't pan out, if Caleb Williams just doesn't pan out. Kyler Murray could easily be QB8. I don't think I would have him ever any higher than that just due to the trust I have in some of these other folks. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, I st- there are people that in theory could be ahead of him. You know, Jordan Love put up a great season. And has some of the best. Oh, you might weapons. change your mind once Marvin Harrison lands there, and then oh he's yeah, he's got a Jamar yeah, Chase, this, right? Like <laughs> that's it. That's, <laughs> that's the thing. The Th- things change, man. Yeah, <laughs> it is. Uh, no, I haven't been. I've been trying not to forget that. You know, they're yeah. going to get a superstar. That he's going to get an upgrade. He's going to be one year removed from that injury. So, yeah, this is you know for if these are twenty twenty four rankings, uh, I've got them easily over Herbert and. Maybe Burrow just because they they're not rushing and and I and he could be over Stroud for what it's worth. Um, yeah. I just I, I saw some of those spike games from Stroud. We if but if Murray's healthy, he can still outdo that. Can Can I ask a question on this? Yeah. Um, I don't know if your listeners no, will ask this, but is this a six point passing touchdown? 
Is that how you normally rank? Yeah, uh, yeah it is, I have it four points. Um, so in the screen, sh the screenshot here, I, I'm basing it off of this. The four points. Okay. It's in this okay. little box here. For, uh, one point for 25 yards. Four points per passing touchdown. Minus two for interceptions. One point for 10 yard rushing. Six points per uh, rushing touchdown. And then uh, two points for a two point conversion. Minus Got two it. for fumble. Okay. Per. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I like the weapons that Love have. I think he can grow with them. Uh, it only took him a one season to flip people's opinion. You know, this was a big riser. And, you know, we just have we don't see very often scenarios like this where someone sits on folks oh. roster for years. And, and I and I'm in leagues where people have sit, sat on them and, and it paid mm -hmm. off. And, it's, you know, kudos to them because people sometimes have tough times having that dynasty patience. So wait for well, a player the thing to I like about love is is not just that, you know, he sat he sat behind some grades. He didn't look that great at the beginning of the season, don't to be honest with you. Like I yeah. didn't think he was doing some, you know, I'm not a quarterback whisperer. Uh, I'm not going to uh, pretend that, but I've watched enough football to have a gut feeling. And I was like, man, I'm I'm out on love for where his value was um come start of the season, but I did an apology video I think on the FFD because it's like by the end of the season, man, his progression and the coaching that he had there and the development, which I think is 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 really key in NFL nowadays is that development that he he got, um, you could see he put in the work. And by the end of the season, man, to me, he looked like almost a different quarterback. I mean, he, he definitely yeah. rocketed up my my uh, my ranking. So uh, yeah, I like him. I like him here for sure. Yeah, this that it was tough. And and you know, as far as like a dynasty lesson, you know, I traded, uh, you know, in in one of the FF dynasty leagues. On, on the clock, I draft Dalton Kincaid. I immediately get an offer for Jordan Love for Dalton Kincaid, and I just accept immediately. This is preseason, and, and I'm like, I'm de I am was rebuilding also. I was desperate for quarterback. All I had was I, I got Stroud to follow me at 106, and that was the only quarterback I had was Stroud. And I was like, oh, okay, 112, uh, Jordan Love. You know, this is – it felt like here's here's a quarterback. You know, a quarterback at the end of the first, I want – uh, yeah. And if he's starting, then I want them. And if it fell apart, that would be rough. But, you know, still worth taking that shot. And that was kind of the last buy low moment was before the season. And, you know, now that window's closed. Is there anyone else that you could think of that's in a buy low that could spike? I mean, the Jordan Love situation was uh, years of maturation. There's no one else in that scenario until probably Green Bay drafts Jordan Love's future replacement. But is there anyone else you can think of maybe that's – close to someone we need to wait on like like how sam howell's behind geno smith uh, or anything like that uh, you know drew lock to you know on the giants i i don't i don't know if i see that one yeah i don't know i i think that uh from from the current rosters i, I think that sam howell is an interesting candidate just because the the gm um john schneider really uh had a high grade on him so the fact that they traded over for him i do think they wanted to lock back but i I, I do think there's a possibility there. Gino's getting up in age, of course, so th there's a possibility of a, of a possible moonshot there. Um, I, I still like Trey Lance options. I know that okay, he's behind that, but, but I still think that. <laughs> I mean, when he came in the league, what was he? I don't even know if he could buy alcohol, right? He was, he was yeah. super young, so that's a good so one. I, I still think that there, and again, it goes goes back to that upside, you know, side of things, right? He's got the legs. We'll see what he, you know, what he looks like once he takes a field in preseason again. How, how if he's done any development, any of that. But there, there could be a potential there. So those are probably the two that I would say right, right now. Yeah, um, like and then it. of course we already said Justin Fields. I mean, you know, oh, that, that there you go. Yeah. Oh, of course. And then I think of the uh, this upcoming draft, which we haven't got to. Um, you know, I'll just mention that I think some of the lower quarterbacks could possibly take a take a spike depending on landing spot Penix and and Bo Nix in particular I think both of them have the uh ha have an ability um or have uh in the right scenario with the right coaching and the right um, game plan I think that they could definitely um be uh right up there in the top rookie performers of this next year so so that that's those those are kind of the four or five names that I, yeah. I, I I'm keeping an eye on so Thanks, man. That, that was great. Those are some good ones. I think Justin Fields could hit the first or uh, the soonest. Uh, but if any injury happens, obviously they can step in. Uh, but the price point that the Steelers got both Russell Wilson and Justin Fields, they can make the decision in, in training camp even yeah. uh, who they want to go with. Um, and, well, and, and we saw them go through three quarterbacks last season. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And one other name I would say is Mike White. I think he's uh, he's pretty cheap in Miami. Wow. Um, and, you know, Tua has been Tua had a healthy season last year. Um but they brought in Mike White for for 
for backup purposes. And so I think he's a he's a fun little maybe a third or fourth round pick if you're on the clock. Somebody might trade out of him. Um, I, I don't know what his value is. I haven't bought him lately, so I'm just yeah. pulling those values out of my oh, yeah, no, out, of, out of the air. But, but but I think he's he's a fun guy to have on my especially on those larger rosters where he can mm-hmm. he could uh, you know win you win you a couple games and possibly a season depending on what what scenario goes there. We never want injuries. I want two of to course. play every single game, but we also have to look at probabilities and and and, and also look at past performance. And Mike did a pretty good job in new uh, in, in the Jets before he went down to, to the Dolphins. And the Dolphins yeah. have a better setup than than the Jets do as far for for quarterbacks with that uh, yeah. with that system. And so he he's another like a uh, sleeper stash that that um, you may want to look at. Yeah, that's a nice deep deep sleeper. The Jets wish they had Mike White last season, and you know, speaking of that team, Zach Wilson. You know, even you know, I was I was in a league where I, I won, but um, I I ended up trading away, you know, just a little little small pick to get Zach Wilson just just during a little stretch because I knew he was starting, and and I didn't end up even using him, but it, you know, just just in case, yeah. you know, sometimes it's just good to have these bodies. Um, yeah, he's so, he's another one, man. He's he's super young. He's got the arm talent. Exactly. And, and you Number can trade him before. Pick. You know, when you get a sandwich and you get the little mayo packets. You know, <laughs> okay. there's a point of point in the season where you could have just traded him for like mayo and mustard. You know, like yeah. And, and I mean, you know, if you've got 35 roster spots, I I don't mind taking a taking a shot on on Zach Wilson. <laughs> Uh, like it, we we reviewed my roster earlier, and, and again, this isn't my team yet, quote unquote. It's an orphan I took over, but like Tyler Huntley, those kind of people, like I love oh, yeah. those type of things on a large bench because they can they can help 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 you get to the championship. So. Absolutely. Sorry, yeah. I did this there. I, I no, felt. you're good. No, that's <laughs> all great. And 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 the thing is, you never know what you can get because there are going to be other people in the future where that might let you cash out. I had Tyler Huntley and was able to trade him actually last season for Tyler Algier in a league where I was going zero RB. I did it before the season. Huntley was coming off of actually a pro bowl. Um, he never saw the field this past season, but I was able to flip him for Algier and just get, you know, some cheap points there. So, you know, you might be able to turn that in, into something later. And just to get through this one yeah. just, uh, with Trevor Lawrence, you know, uh, you know, I wish he, he rushed a little more, but the team – it does have some pieces around him. I don't love all the pieces, and I'm thinking they're going to get a young piece this next season. Uh, you know, long term, I, f- I feel okay ab- about it, but this is one where I might just rather take a Dak Prescott because I know he's tied to an elite receiver. Um, and then, you know, Dak Prescott, he he's in a great spot, but is is a bas- basically on a one-year deal at this point. So we'll see what the Cowboys want to do long term with him. Uh, but he was number three overall quarterback. And Purdy, I think, was number four or five. Uh, you know, he's young and yep. quite slept on and could, uh, you know, if he were to do it again, no one is at all surprised. And we're going to be wondering why he's not higher up our ranks. Uh, yep. Maybe it's because of the lack of rushing or because he was Mr. Irrelevant. Uh, but, you know, he he delivered. And, and these other two young guys, it's, it's more projection on uh, some of the draft capital I'm thinking that they're getting. And with before yep. we leave this tier with the New England landing spot, does that scare you for either of these players? Uh, it doesn't scare me because it's a new regi- regime. I know Mayo has been yeah. he's, he's been in that um, system, but I mean, I, I watched his press com a couple of his press conferences, especially his his first one, and mm-hmm. and he wasn't he wasn't afraid to say no, Kraft, you're wrong on a couple of things, you know, like he, he wasn't afraid to kind of you know bring his own opinion, what you really liked, and so it, it doesn't scare me. I, I think that a lot of times we. Um, you know, we, we get into helmet scouting um, and, and you know, you, you got to kind of take the context of, of what they're going into. New England has some decent pieces. I know that they don't have a number one right now as far as a number one target. Yeah. But they have a lot of great targets. Um, they have Bourne. They have um, DeMar uh, Douglas. Henry, they have DeMarro Douglas. They've got, you know, they, they've, they've, they're building some of that roster. They're building up the defense. And so I, I don't mind either player. I, I personally... You know, in this particular tier, there's um, my, my only, uh, you know, my only thing would be May and um, let's see, May. Um, and I'm looking at my rankings. I, I got Purdy down a little bit, but I think I might move okay. him up because I, 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 I agree with you. I, I Being a Seahawks fan, I sometimes have to make sure <laughs> I'm not pulling my Niner uh, bias, but but I, I do like Purdy. I like the situation that he's in, so I think I'd keep him up, but um, yeah, no change if they move Brandon Ayuk. 
in a trade or something? No, because be I think same. that they'll okay. they'll probably bring in somebody that yeah. you know not not not. I think Brandon Ayuk is a great wide receiver, but I don't think that that scheme needs a great wide receiver. I think they need a good wide receiver. So, yeah, um, yeah, we'll see. Uh, he's definitely got an opportunity uh, to continue to produce and into the B tier. We've got two attack of Aloha, who is also connected to two really good high end weapons that are speedsters and. Uh, those guys on the outside really spreading the offense. And then you got the re-signing of Raheem Mostert today. Mm-hmm. Devin and Chain is, is also an option there. So I wonder if Chain becomes a starter. But we're talking quarterbacks. Either way, this team is surrounded with just speedsters for days. You know, he, like you mentioned, is at, you know, kind of a health risk. And the team has not extended him yet. I think if they extend him, that's the green light to continue to draft to a yeah. – sometimes you have to project these things, though, and get ahead of it. Not going to move him ahead of the rushing quarterbacks or really anything there. I, I think Tua gets a job no matter what due to the lack of quarterbacks in the league. Yeah. Uh, but he's probably in his best situation right now. So hopefully he stays there for fantasy I purposes. I think, I think the problem with Tua is Tua's brain. Uh, he, gets in, <laughs> he gets in his head too much. Kind of this, this is one of the gripes I have with Penix is he in early game, if he doesn't get a couple of those easy layup shots, he starts like – churning in his mind oh i should have hit that i should have did this i should have did that yeah. right and then it kind of escalates throughout the game right because i think two is one of the most accurate quarterbacks but there's times when he just kind of for no apparent reason goes off off the cliff and what i've noticed is just the beginning of the game the momentum of the beginning of the game i think mike um mike mcdonald um is that right uh miami said coach mike um uh, i have uh seahawks oh, right? daniels daniel six yeah. um um i I, I think that he's done a great job of coaching and, and helping to, uh, you know, kind of kind of center and, and let some of that stuff fly off his shoulders. But that that's that's the one concern I have with Tua. But I'm I'm with you, man. If Tua doesn't get signed in Miami, there's going to be enough teams. I mean, we have a third of the league every year where there's a new quarterback typically. So there, there's definitely a chance for him to go and and be somewhere else because I, I definitely think he's one of the better 32 quarterbacks that are you know flying around the league right now. Yeah. So. Yeah, and the hype on McCarthy is he could be one of those as well. And with some of the metrics at the Combine, it seemed like he actually may have some mobility. He had the top uh, throw power at the Combine. Mm -hmm. So some things that I just wasn't sure of, um, you know, athleticism-wise, it looks good there uh, and could be a top pick if the team trades up for him. A lot of teams that are needy. Um, it was just an age thing for why I put him over Goff, but you know I, I like Goff, like you mentioned, man. He, he just has incredible weapons all around him, and, and I just, uh, you know, I, I'm a sucker for a lot of this NFL hype and stuff like that. So when the coach first got there, and you know he just came with all that energy, and they mm-hmm. they backed up everything they said. We we que- uh, the media will question the Jameer Gibbs pick and the linebacker pick in the first round, and then they go mm-hmm. out and they're, they're they're now like you know Jameer is sometimes the, the dynasty RB one, and uh, you know. You know, a lot of these moves are working out, and I, I just like what they're they're doing. Uh, so hard to root against Goff in this spot, especially I think he's about to get an extension. So if you're taking Kirk Cousins, uh, who I have the wrong age here, it should be uh, 26. It should not be 26. It should be 36. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, uh, you know, if you're taking a 36 year old cousin, I'm definitely taking Goff and everything that he's got working for him. Yeah. Um. And and yeah, Goff. He, he's actually had I think uh, what 19 points a game. He's been pretty good he had the best receiver in the game so now it's a, a more young team but mm-hmm. uh i had mentioned on my last stream for the receivers when i was talking about drake london i mentioned the austin abbott article about uh you're just on twitter about how all the kirk cousins receivers have been top 10 wide receivers over the past few years so kind of a good stat if you want those receivers there and and they do have some weapons and then yeah same with baker mayfield a lot of good weapons he got re-signed there you know he had kind of been just a, a middling quarterback most of the time, and he's still around that 16 points per game, which is just just okay. But, you know, I'll, I'll take it from Baker. I, I like what we're getting from him. Yeah. Deshaun Watson, we've got Bryce Young, Will Levis. They, they all had down seasons. So we'll, we'll just have to see how it goes. I think Watson is fine here. He will he should be able to deliver what, what they've got. And Young is, is more of like, you know, this is kind of make or break for him. We need to see it. They've thrown some weapons his way with Deontay Johnson. Uh, and Will Left's got a, a weapon in, in Calvin Ridley. So 
Yeah. Uh, the team is saying, let us know what you are this season, and then, and we'll decide from there. But any other things that you uh, that stands out to you to you in this round? No, I mean, I think it's it, it's it's really similar to mine. I, you you, do, you have the rookies a little bit higher, and I I have uh -huh. Cousins down a tier. Um, okay. Just because of that Achilles injury, I know he's been great. I just know um, every day that I get out of bed. Um, being older, uh, like all those little dings and hurts, you know, they hurt a little bit more. So I know. Oh, so he imagine had, how he feels. <laughs> yeah. So so I know I know that he's he's got to be feeling it, man. So um, yeah. but no. Uh, in all seriousness, I, I have him down, but I mean, he's in a great situation, which I don't blame you putting him up here. Um, I think Baker is 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 belongs in this tier with the the money that he signed and, and Watson, of course. Um, you know, I I love what they've done in Carolina. You know, the coaching staff that they brought in, who um. Uh, you know, and uh, that Dave started to put around, you know, he kind of helped resurrect uh, Geno's career when um, when he was in Seattle and then he went to Tampa and, you know, he did the same thing with kind of Baker and now he's in Carolina. Yeah, the, first thing, Alice, yeah. the first thing that they did is they spent like, they spent a, like a half a Watson contract on guards. <laughs> so so yeah. Carolina got some guard play that I, I think is really going to help Bryce Young because there was, you know, Thielen had a little bit of separation. Mingo is a rookie and he didn't really have a lot of separation. There was there was just so, so much scatter scatteredness there that I think, you know, with guard play, with a little bit more protection, like you said, um, Deontay coming in there. Um, you know, I'm still I still like Miles Sanders. I know that everybody's out on him now, but I still like Sanders and, okay. and Ch uh, Chuba. Um, I don't know what the contracts are, so I'll say that if they're on the team, I like them. If they're not, then obviously that's going to be going to be different. Um, yeah, but I, I like all these. I, I like that this B tier because it's kind of a kind of a, a bunch of shots, right? You don't know what McCarthy is. You don't know what Cousin is coming back from a, um, an injury. You don't know what uh, Watson is coming back from his injury. You know, Young second season, getting some new stuff around him. We'll see how he performs, Levis. But but in general, there's a lot of upside here. So I I, I definitely uh, don't don't have too. You know, I think if you could create a B minus category, then you could probably drop <laughs> some of these. But if, since you don't have a B yeah. minus, I think, I think I'm good with where they're at. So, all right, I like it. Let me move us over to the side and go into the next tier. Um, uh, yeah, I absolutely think that uh, real quick, Bryce Young and Will Levis, they could be one of those uh, risers if things go their way. Oh yeah. Um, you know, maybe if you're a rebuilder, you you take one of them over. Cousins, but you know, got to make sure the deal's right. And then we mentioned Justin Fields earlier to start the C tier. It's more of um, the belief that he will get that job again at some point, whether it's this year or next year. That could be a good value boost. And honestly, even if it's just part of a season, I view it as similar to playing zero RB from the standpoint of if someone breaks a toenail and like a Russell Wilson and Justin Fields gets that job, yeah. even if it's the during the fantasy playoffs, that is well worth holding him all season. It's tougher in a redraft league than a dynasty. I, I, I'm willing to hold on to Justin Fields for sure. And really? um, yeah, with Stafford, you know, we kind of know what he is. He's got some good weapons, and we just hope that he stays healthy. You know, there's been continuous rumors that he may retire, but the rumors have gone on long enough to where I, and, and he and he or his wife has dispelled them at various points. So it's like I'm not going to worry too much about it if, if he's playing. He's definitely playing this year, and we know what he's got there. And then, you know, Bo Nix, Michael Penix Jr., we're wanting to find out which quarterback goes first out of these two to help me properly rank it, and then also which, if not both, go in the first round of the NFL draft. That's going to be huge for the value of these two guys. You know, Broncos are a team. Vikings are a team that have needs. Uh, it doesn't seem like Raiders want to go that way, maybe with the Minshew signing, but I think at this point Minshew – isn't stopping a team from making a long-term move. So uh, we'll see where those two guys go. That's very interesting. And, and the rest of the quarterbacks here are all veterans who we know that they're going to uh, produce this season. Uh, Carr actually is, is pretty young, 33. I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the league, you know, at least five more years. But the, the, he's one of those lower scores that he, he ends up being just a depth piece, you know, maybe even a QB4. So, you know, he doesn't have a lot of value on your roster sometimes, so a little bit tough to just want to value him. And that's why I've got him as the QB 32 here. Um, so what do you think about these guys? And uh, 
would you prioritize the rookies over them and Justin Fields, or are you just going to get production in this range? I, I like the range. I mean, I think that if you put um, Cousins in the B range, you probably got to put Stafford there because there's enough question marks on both sides of those guys that, and but there's enough performance metrics there that I think that they they can both kind of be in the same tier. Um, the rookies, like you said, I mean, the, right now we we're, we're just all we're going off what we can, right? Like, and, and I think this is a great great spot for them, um, kind of right in the middle of the rankings. Um, I, I I have Penix over Knicks, but I have Knicks as a really great um, above average game manager. So meaning okay. that I think that he could he could go into a team and 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 fill a role, um, you know, and 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 he has decent passing ability. His arm's pretty decent. He's an older player, uh, older rookie, quote unquote. So he's got you know he's got the the knowledge and the and the. Uh, the money's going to come, and I don't think it's going to like yeah. blind them. And so, so they're they're in same thing with Penix. I think Penix, as I said, I've I've watched all of all of the UW games this year. Oh with yeah, Penix. He has one of the best spins in the game um, on that ball. It's always fun watching the left hander throw. That's why I like watching Tua play, just because it it changes the way the field is. Right? It's um, yeah. Um, you know, it, it it's it it's. Yeah, I don't know. It's it, it, he's he's a fun player, and then yeah, the, the rest of the, the 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 veterans here. I mean, all all four of them I think are in prove it years. Um, Gino's up against it. Uh, Wilson's obviously on a one year contract. Rogers is coming back from, you know, his injury, and we'll see what's going on. And Carr had a disastrous season last year, and in lots of ways. <laughs> but you know, but I think that there's enough talent there in um, in New Orleans where he can have a bounce back season, and he could uh, he could hop up a tier here. So. Okay. So that those last four there, I think, um, I, th- I, I think are great. I, I, um, I think they're in a great spot as far as uh, rankings go. So, all right, yeah, uh, I haven't heard much love from on Derek Carr, so that's good to hear. Um, yeah, man, Rogers, I hope he has a good season. I, I have a, I don't feel like I've aggressively ranked Garrett Wilson and all of these options, but when you see like mocks of Brock Bowers going there or at least one of these weapons, you know, you really, everything's riding on, uh, on him having a healthy season. Mm -hmm. So we're definitely hoping for that. Uh, but the points per game has typically been good. And I feel like Russell Wilson has been slept on, you know, he still had a pretty high points per game, uh, most seasons. Um, so, you know, it's just one of those guys that you can get late. And then this tier, D tier, we've got Daniel Jones, Gardner Minshew, Sam Darnold, Sam Howell, Spencer Rattler, Michael Pratt, really just some back end, um, backup quarterbacks, potentially, you know, Gardner and Daniel Jones and Sam Darnold are currently starting as of currently as of March 29th. Uh, but we'll see what happens at the start of the season. And, you know, we can make these this round quick. Is there any, uh, you know, are you trading these guys for a second? Or are you waiting until in season when someone's desperate for a quarterback? Are you, you're fine with one of these as a QB three. How are you handling these guys? Um, I don't think I'm trading any of them at this point. Uh, okay. I, I just don't think the value is there. I've got Gardner on that team that we talked about earlier. I think he's going to be great for Devontae Adams um, and Jacoby Myers. Um, so I, I like him for the positional players. From a quarterback perspective, I, I like his his moxie, right? I, I think it's yeah. really, that's, that's a fun quarterback room between um, I, I look like Farva, but I feel like Marv, Aiden O'Connell, that, that yeah. was a certain preseason. I love that shirt. And then um, Gardner, you know, Gardner, Minshew Mania, like that's just a fun personality, personality. Oh, yeah. but, but from a football perspective, I, I definitely think Gardner is a pocket passer um, and, and a wide receiver specialist. So a lot of the other positions may get uh, ticked down a little bit. So um, I, I don't think I'm going to go after him. Uh, Daniel Jones is interesting to me. It, you know, it's really dependent upon what the Giants do. But again, Daniel Jones, I, I've always been a big Daniel Jones guy, just because nobody likes him and he produces fantasy points at a at a pretty good clip when he's healthy. Um, you know, we we saw the Giants last year, and uh, we saw Daniel Jones in the beginning of the season. Everybody didn't like him, but I'll be honest, like that offensive line was not what it looked like towards the end when. Um, when uh, the the Italian stallion was went took over, um, and he also didn't have a crossover game with Barkley, and so I think those were two really big key indicators for Daniel Jones that um, that I would have liked to see him with that little bit more of a balanced line and 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 Barkley on the field to 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 really get a better gauge on him. But they paid him money. I don't know how they're gonna. Um, I, I don't know how they're going to. Uh, 
cut him. I, I'm, I'm not again. I haven't looked at the at the at the contract details, but uh, maybe my the D stands for Daniel Jones. I don't I don't know. <laughs> yeah, right. Our boy uh, Ethan uh, asked him what the D stands for. It, uh, it stands for big dyslexic. I think is actually what it means. Yeah. I, just, I get things backwards sometimes, but um, uh, but no, uh, it's. Um, um, I, you know, with four point touching, uh, passing touchdown list, I think this is, uh, this is pretty appropriate. And I see you just popped open the, the triple E's there. You know, yeah. I, I, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't mind that. Um, you know, I, I think Drew Locke, um, he likes to play hero ball a lot. Um, but he, he had, he did have some development while he was here in Seattle. Uh, it'll, it'll be interesting to see what he, what he comes out. I think he really thinks that he has the spot to start there. Um, for the Giants, and so it'll be interesting to see who wins out there. But I, I still think he, I still think Daniel Jones can um, outplay Locke personally. So, and that's not because he left Seattle; it's just because of of what I saw with Locke and the talent yeah. evaluation that's currently in the Giants. I don't think it's a really good match to be honest, because he like he likes to throw some deep routes in, in that. Um, and I just, I don't know. I, I think. As of right this moment, and I know they're going to add. And I know it's early. Um, you know, we're we're a year away, uh, a year away, a month away. It feels yeah. like a year away from the draft, but, but we're a month away from the draft. So there's a lot to lot to shake out here. But um, yeah, in general, man, I, I, I enjoy this list. I, I think I'd add. You know, we we talked about uh, Trey Lance, and we talked about a couple yeah. of ancillary pe- play, people that are laying out there. But I, I think for the most part, I, I like what you did here. I like I like the format. It looks looks great. So. Well, appreciate it. Absolutely. You think uh, you're right on some of those sleepers. So I can't forget about them. Ethan says, does this list incorporate the talent of their team or just isolated talent? And uh, yeah, we're factoring in the situation for everyone. You know, just like when we're looking at these rookies, uh, once we find out their situation, the draft capital and the team that they're on, that is going to change their values. So we, we definitely view them as a talent, but then also what can the team situation help with? So like a Tua Tagovailoa, you know, if he wasn't connected to Tyree Kill and Jalen Waddle, I think he would be at least below golf. And I, I mean, he could st- he could actually may deserve to be below golf currently. Uh, but you know what I mean? That definitely would play into it, what the weapons are. You know, one of the issues that Justin Fields had early on in his career is he just had not many people to throw to other than Darnell Mooney until last season when they got a DJ Moore. You know, it's really tough to thrive in those circumstances. Uh, they're, you know, uh, or, you know, and even on the flip side with other players like the wide receivers, like a Drake London, it's tough when you don't have Kirk Cousins throwing you the ball and you have, um, I think, a first year starter in Desmond Ritter or, you know, things like that. So definitely factoring in the situation. You know, even with Justin Herbert, now I didn't let what the current situation is override the talent. Justin Herbert, really good quarterback, but the two coaches coming in are both run heavy coaches. So for some people, I have seen Justin Herbert sliding, and now I'm overriding the the situation with the talent. So it, if I think the talent is just undeniable, then that's kind of how I, I have it ranked. But there are some of these where, like a Jared Goff, if he didn't have all of these weapons. I think he would be one of those guys who was lower like he was in, in the past a lot of times. Mm-hmm. Um, on Even though he did have some weapons, you know, if, if he doesn't have everything he needs around him, then it's hard to really have them up uh, much higher. And and even the rookies like a Bryce Young, like you mentioned, the, all he had was Adam Thielen last season as a right. rookie. Maybe now that he's got more, more weapons, more line help. Uh, you know, Will Levis, the Titans, they're projected to, to actually take the best tackle in mm-hmm. the league and Joe Alt. That's yep. going to help his situation, uh, even though it's not an offensive skill position. So definitely factoring in all, all of the things with the situation there. And and, and that's why, like, a Derek Carr doesn't get much of a boost because he's, he's, you know, didn't get much help from Mike Thomas, but it's just Olave and and even uh, their hybrid QB, Taysom Hill. He's been injured and getting older. He's 34. It's, it's, you know, it's maybe that helps the passing, but – it's just the dynamicism of the offense isn't really there. Kamara's getting older, so it's tough to really have him much higher when there's no rushing to to offset some of the downsides of the situation. Yeah, yeah, and and I'll say, I mean, just like in real life, right? Um, if you start a new job, 
that first year can sometimes be rocky, man. Like he, he was a yeah. writer for a long time and he was, he was used to being on the West coast and he was used to knowing where he was going to grab lunch and do, all, <laughs> you know, like there's all kinds of outside, I forget it was his first year. <laughs> yeah. Outside of football stuff. Right. And so, um, I, you know, I know that he can produce um, at an okay clip. I know that he can provide wide receiver one upside with um, Adams and and some of the other um, you know players that we've had there. And so I, I I still am on the I'm still on the I still like the car like you know yeah. bringing, bringing the car around. I'm I'm still um, I don't know if I'm out there buying him um, aggressively, but I definitely am looking. Can I add him in a deal? Can I can I add him as a piece that that gets me something if i'm trading out of you know if i'm trading out of a, a positional place uh you know i'm trading the dac as an example because i'm i'm gonna start yeah. well maybe dac's not a good good example but um uh, i'm trying to think of like you know maybe somebody maybe somebody in your league is a, re- a really big uh brock purdy fan and so you know i i might move off of of purdy get a car and then I'm going to get something great. Right. Because I'm not going to yeah. just move Purdy to go to car. That's not what I'm saying, but, but if I can get, <laughs> you know, uh, let me ask you this. If I, if it was car and uh, the one Oh four for Purdy, I mean, it's car and the one Oh four, right. All day. Yeah. One Oh four. And you know, you can get a quarterback there and then you've got car. Who's already a you know quarterback three. And, you know, so you can probably get more rushing upside with that QB four or that one Oh four. And you're still getting something similar to what Purdy could, in theory, produce. You know, may, I don't think Carr gets to 20 points per game, but mm. uh, you could get something close. And maybe the quarterback you draft is ends up getting that for you. So, uh, I think I think that one scares me a little bit. But I, I'm I'm personally comfortable taking a, uh, you know, I have right behind Purdy, Drake May, and Jane Daniels, who I would think one of those would be at the 104 so you're basically staying in that tier and just throwing on a car on top mm-hmm. uh so it, you know a little bit of a risk but i'm i feel like a daniels could outscore purdy on his own and may you know maybe he could do that so not not a bad idea it makes me a little nervous uh but mm-hmm. uh yeah it's, it's not bad they're gonna have the, the draft pedigree you know way above what purdy had so they should at least get a few years to prove themselves yeah, I mean, I think there's a there's a lot lot that goes to it. I I, I believe that in you know when and this was a four point um, chart that you have up, and so in a four point league, I think I'd be okay with that because I would take an upside on like a Jalen Daniels, and then yeah, um, have Carr there as kind of my my backup and replace um, Purdy with Daniels because I think there'd be a higher upside depending on where he goes, you know. Um, but um, yeah, oh, we got Aaron in with the, the big question. Yeah, Before. are there any teams you will avoid in Dynasty or Redraft? And, and that means, is there a, a team that's just so bad that you want to avoid all the players on that team? And um, that could be like a general uh, strategy kind of philosophy, whichever side of that fence you're on. So how, how would you answer that question? I don't think there's any that I'm outright avoiding. I think there's some that I'm, I'm, I'm waiting and seeing, right? Denver comes to mind. Um, they're, they're in complete transition. Um, you know, I think that, uh, um, we, well, we, we were just talking about car. I, I think that, that yeah. I, I think that there's a lot of people that would say new Orleans, but I don't think that I'm on that boat. I think there's, there's fantasy points to have in that, that offense. Um, it, a lot of it has to do with the coordinator, um, uh, more so than the head coach. And I want to see what the pace of play is because sometimes yeah. you can over, you can get some better value with some of these lower, lower end guys if they're hiking the ball more, right? And so, yeah. so they're, yeah, they're, they're losing those games and they yeah. have garbage time. They have the garbage time, they, they, and then just the offense in general is 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 uh, geared to not let the shot clock run out like in basketball, right? And so, yeah, um, I, I would say Denver is probably the highest for me. I'm I'm kind of avoiding the Jets, yeah, because the only well, there's two players on the Jets that I'm not avoiding, obviously, which is Garrett Wilson and Brees Hall. But but those guys cost so much. So if I don't have them on my team, yeah. I don't think I'm really looking to get any value yeah. out, out outside of out, outside of those two players, and I'm not looking to buy those. So I would say that those are probably two that I'm I'm looking yeah. to, to avoid. Okay. How about you? Yeah. You- so you know, looking at the quarterbacks who are starting, but on you know at the bottom in these tiers here. So Daniel Jones, Gardner Minshew for the Raiders. Uh, Sam Darnold for the Vikings. You know, you can't avoid Justin Jefferson or Jordan Addison. 
you know, maybe right. CJ Hawkinson. You can't you can't really avoid uh, Devontae Adams, you know, because we've seen any they he's had random quarterbacks, you know, the past couple seasons and it's still been able to produce. And Minshew was able to support Michael Pittman this past season, so that doesn't bother me there. Daniel Jones, uh, you know, so the Giants, you know, I would be worried if. You know, there is probably maybe going to be a receiver that goes there. And, you know, if it's Roman mm-hmm. Dunes, you know, would, you know, maybe or, or Malik Neighbors, maybe you're nervous mm-hmm. for for that player. And there's no receiver. There's a Devin Singletary there. I, I'm just going to say it's Giants. I'm going to just give an answer. It's going to be Giants. All mm-hmm. of them, they don't have a tight end that I care for. You know, Waller's vacillating whether or not he wants to retire. <laughs> We've got, uh, you know, quarterback drama between Daniel Jones and Drew Locke. We'll see who's the starter and the other weapons haven't panned out. So that one is, uh, you know, a one injury away from being an absolute fire, you know? Yeah. Uh, so For sure. uh, yeah, that, that would be mine. Um, the Giants are a good one, but man, if Waller's in, I'm, I'm, I'm in on Waller. I'll say that. I, I agree with you. If he retires, obviously he's I'm late. Out. He's going late too. Yeah. But if, if he's in, man, he's, uh, I love that dude. Man. He just, he, he's, He's a great, great player, but he's also a great story. You know, some of the stuff that he's he's dealt with, and yeah, and I know I shouldn't factor oh, yeah. that into my <laughs> my thought process here, but but I do. That's just the way I am. So I, I love Waller, and I love the fact that you know sometimes it takes him. I think a little bit longer to get back from injury, um, possibly because of, of some of the stuff that he had in the past. But I, I still think he's what 30, 30 31. Yeah. Uh, so. so. If he, stays around i mean you know what is kelsey 36 so there's still some runway there for for a big, big yeah. giant tight end that I yeah, it's just a rumor right now and that's swinging the whole market basically oh yeah yeah it's a good point um, though i think i definitely will after this go out and throw some uh waller trades out see what i can get so <laughs> all right man um i mean that's probably smart if we're being honest uh you know you guys have been smart about on your show just making sure that if the market's down on someone, treat it like stocks. You buy low, yep. and it's not going to feel comfortable, right? So yep. you, you got to just lean into that because whatever's obvious is sometimes it's just to play the opposite, you know. Yep. Um, all right, so you're 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 the first on the clock here. Oh, all right. In the rookie draft, and you can actually announce the pick. I'm going to manually punch, punch these in. I know uh, um, you're in the app, but. Uh, it'll just go automatically if I don't. So who do you got here at the 101 in this Dynasty Superflex rookie mock draft? It's tight end premium. There's 12 teams. Four points per passing touchdown. It's okay. PPR. Who do you got at the 101? Um, I, I know that Marvin Harrison is a is a, uh, a fun pick to go at 101, but I'm going to go Caleb Williams. I think that he's coming into one of the best um, position positions that you can come into as, as far as, uh, you know, starting your first year. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely him for me. All right. I like it. QB one off the board. And uh, so I'm going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. I like the talent. Uh, I like the size. And uh, he's got good speed. We haven't seen him do the combine or – do any of the pro day stuff. I saw him at CJ Stroud's pro day a year ago. Uh, but, you know, it looks like a good player. And I like to base some of my stuff off of what the NFL mocks are saying. And this is going to be a guy drafted almost as highly, if not higher than Jamar Chase. Um, really good prospect. So I'm going to go with Marvin Harrison Jr. at the 102. Who do you got at the 103? Yeah, um, we're going to go uh, Jalen Daniel. Jaden Daniels, and we got a question here. Uh, great question. Okay, never mind. Not a question. All right, so Jaden Daniels off the board. Good legs, rushing upside. I'd like to pick. Can't really go wrong there. It's super flex. Um, you know, my last show, my host was, uh, you know, stressing the importance of going for those elite skill positions that you know are going to help you win these rosters. Uh, but I'm still going to lean. Uh, Drake May here at the 104 uh, in Superflex. Just make sure I get one of these quarterbacks uh, to help my team out. And because it's a deep wide receiver class, and we just keep seeing some of these later guys like Apuka that pop off. And not going to say anyone is that, but you know, let me get that quarterback. It's going to be a little bit harder to find outside of this first round. 
So what do you got at 105? Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, I'm going to go with um, I'm going to go with neighbors. I think I have a doomsday and neighbors as a coin flip. It's really going to be a landing spot okay. dependent for me as far as um, as far as talent goes. Or sorry, as far as talent goes, they're 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 neck and neck. So yeah, um, either one of them can flip for me. I, Marvin Harrison isn't that far ahead of them in my opinion either. Um, you know, you talked about New England earlier. You know. Um, I'm not scared of New England, but I'll say that if one goes to New England and one goes to Arizona, I think I'm going to take Arizona, right? <laughs> just just because of the quarterback play um, at, at this moment. So, yeah, I've been really impressed with Roma Dunze. I liked seeing his all green reception perception. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, like that he was able to help that team get to the championship. I, I like the other receivers that helped as well. Uh, I just really, I really like the talent. I know it's tight end premium. But I have been, been swayed that Roma Dunze is a really elite player. Uh, I, I like the size as well, the 6'3". You know, last year we didn't get any big players. We got a couple already. And I know Neighbors is um, only six foot, but he was super explosive. So I'm going to take Roma Dunze here. Uh, you know, really sadly to leave a good, another good player for you here on the board. Uh, but who you got at the 107? Uh, this is easy. Lock it in. Bowers, baby. Especially in Titan Premium. I'm- I'm all over it. Yeah. Yeah. That's someone I could have had an argument with that last Sleeper day. didn't like it. They just said, come on, dude, if you had the Oh, uh, reach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me turn this sound off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So Bowers at the 107, not a reach. And mm-hmm. um, one of the things that, guys, so, guys, I'm going to go ahead and jump in here and, and do a quick, uh, fix of something that I, I I forgot to mention to the draft that uh, and Big D pretend that you definitely are aware of this. Even though I, I sent this prehand. We are basing this off of the CBS mock draft, guys. So Caleb Williams goes oh, yeah. to the Bears, and we got Drake May going to the Washington Commanders. Um, there were some trades that happened where Minnesota traded up with Arizona to the Vikings to get the number four overall pick. And um, so they're now in the driver's seat to get that pick. I'll show you who they took here in a moment. Green Bay traded up with Miami to get the 21st pick. Uh, and then Dolphins just trade back to the 25th. The Rams, they traded up with the Broncos to get the number 12 overall pick. Uh, so Rams are moving up. Somehow, for some reason, the Broncos moved back. And then uh, Broncos get that 19th pick. And then this is what the draft ended up, or excuse me, the draft ended up looking like. Caleb Williams to the Bears, Drake May Commanders, Jaden Daniels to the Patriots, J.J. McCarthy to the Vikings. We've got Marvin Harrison Jr. to the Chargers, Malik Neighbors to the Giants, Roma Dunze to the Bears, Brock Bowers to the Jets, Michael Penix Jr. to the Car- uh, to the Broncos, Brian Thomas Jr. to the Cardinals, Adonai Mitchell to the Bills. We've got second round Keon Coleman to the Panthers, Lad McConkey to the Patriots, Bo Nix to the Raiders, Jalen Polk to the Colts. We got Ricky Pearsall to the Jaguars. The back-to-back Xavier pick. Uh, Worthy goes to the Bengals. Leggett goes to the Steelers. Troy Franklin goes to the Eagles. Malachi Corley to the Browns. Ben Sennett to the Dolphins. And he's been consistently high. I think Ben Sennett, if you're doing any early drafts, I'm, I'm just going to take a shot on Sennett early. I uh, liked his after-the-catch ability. Um, already, but he's been getting mocked pretty highly. And then here in the third round, Jalen McMillan, one of my favorite receivers, goes to the Patriots. So that's their second wide receiver in a row. So that's going to be uh, interesting. Uh, and then we got Trey Benson to the Giants. So first running back off the board here in the third round. Roman Wilson to the Jets. Spencer Rattler goes to the Falcons in the third round. Watch your back, Kirk Cousins. And we've got oh, Jatavian oh. Sanders to the Commanders. Max Melton, uh, you know, this is a kind of a shakeup. Go, he's a running back that goes to the Falcons. Uh, this feels early when you got Bijan. Uh, Theo Johnson to the Bengals. Braylon Allen to the Colts. Jermaine Burton to the Texans. Jonathan Brooks um, also to the Texans. No, uh, yeah. And we've got Javon Baker to the Cardinals. Cade Stover to the Niners. Tez Walker to the Chiefs. Jalen Wright to the Rams. And real quick, do any of these stand out to you? Uh, it's like, all right, this is a huge value spike for this player, uh, or is it or a huge faller? Uh, maybe you can find one of each. 
Uh, but overall, I would say the running backs are, you know, we're not expecting them to go in the second round. No one really is. And, it, yeah. and I've been saying in the past two years that to me, the third round is the new second round for if a running back gets drafted there, I'm interested. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, it's only a three round mock. Uh, but yeah, is there any big riser in value or a big faller in value that you see here? There's nobody that really stands out. I, I think in our actual mock that we're doing, I would have, um, I, I completely spaced that we were going to use the CBS mock draft. So I would no, that's, taken, that's, oh, that's me oh. learning as a host. Yeah, no, you're good. Man. <laughs> that's, so I would have took, oh, um, uh, big O over, um, neighbors just because okay. I like the, the landing spot with Caleb, um, and, you know, being able to learn and grow, you know, with that rookie quarterback may not, I, neighbors might have a chance and see neighbors went to, um, the Giants and the Giants, they didn't uh, try to see. Did they draft a quarterback? Yeah, and 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 uh, let me make a quick correction, guys. Let me make a quick correction. Uh, Jonathan Bricks um, went to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, that Ooh. was that that fiction. It was Jonathan Bricks to the Dallas Cowboys. Okay. All right, there it is. Jonathan Bricks to the there Dallas Cowboys. Cool. All right, and so that one where I think that he, he's already, in some people's eyes, the RB1. I would say he can become the RB1 uh, if that mm-hmm. happens, just based on the hype, the ma- massive need at the running back position. And I believe, and I'm going to get out of this after I made that correction now, but I think that uh, really Jonathan Brooks versus uh, versus Trey Benson. Trey Benson goes to the Giants. I mean, both would be the RB1. But mm-hmm. Cowboys, I feel like, is a better landing spot. You just have to wait uh, for him to get healthy. I think yep. that'd be my yeah, biggest I riser. So I'll I'll That's go ahead cool. and jump back into the mock, and we'll I'll uh I'll give you one uh one redo because it was my fault. <laughs> <laughs> oh no 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 it's it's all good let's let's keep it as all right. I'm, I'm all right. fine with that. Okay so. With this next pick, and I'll keep this on the screen for folks uh, as best I can. With this next pick, uh, let's see. I'm still liking uh, these quarterbacks. Uh, so I think this is where I probably go JJ McCarthy and just go ahead and get JJ McCarthy off the board. You got triple, and, uh, double J's there in Minnesota, right? Yeah. JJ with JJ. It's like, it's going to yeah. be a nice, nice little combo. Yeah. All right, so who do you got with the next pick? Now that we're back on track, so with this draft, I you know I'm I'm uh, I'm leaning Brian uh, Thompson Jr. BTJ, okay. but honestly, I think I'm going to go if Penix goes 19 in the first round. I think that that's enough for me to pull the trigger here at the 109 and go with Penix All right. to the Broncos. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Yeah, sorry to pass on these starting quarterbacks. So. I definitely lean that way as well. And um, so we got Penix gone. And in this draft, Bo Nix doesn't go to the second round. So I'm going to wait on him. And mm-hmm. I will go with the uh, with the with one of the other remaining first-round wide receivers who goes to the Cardinals, Brian Thomas uh, Jr. And uh, just like the overall size-speed combination. And, uh, yeah, uh, who do you got with the 11th pick here? Yeah, I'd go Xavier Worthy to the Bengals. Ooh. I think that's a lot of fun with uh, T. Higgins yep. possibly out the door. You got Jamar Chase. You got an accurate quarterback and Worthy with that speed. And he's more than just a speed guy. He's got some route route running ability. I definitely like that one eleven Worthy pick. Awesome. And uh, one thing I was trying to make a mental note of is there's no chance Xavier Worthy falls to the second round. I don't yeah. think that's possible <laughs> I don't because either. we've seen the NFL and exactly how they work is speed matters because it doesn't matter that that player is getting the ball. It's that the defense is worried that that player is getting the ball. And then you can open up a Travis Kelsey or a Rashi Rice of Xavier Worthy's on the other side type of thing. Um, all right. So the final pick in the 12th round, um, I'm going to go with the other first round wide receiver in Adonai Mitchell. And uh, he shows some five, four or five, three speed uh, and ends up here with the Bills to replace uh, Gabe Davis for 2024 and potentially Stephon Diggs for the future. Who do you got to start the second round? 
Yeah, I mean, looking at the values now, I think I'm going to lean. Um, I, th I think I might pull the same concept and go with Lad. Lad here, I really yeah, like Lad. Lad. I think uh, Dick him, 34. Yeah, matched up with Daniels, being able to grow together. I think that would be a great, uh, great combination there. And like you said, the, the or like we talked about, there's not really um, any target hogs in the Patriots, so I think he'd come yeah. right out of the gate and have the ability to to get some uh, some great uh, some great reps in. So, I like it. Okay, and I've been wondering where does Keon Coleman go? This is technically the Panthers' first pick in the draft. Draft uh, for me, it's between him and I. I lean. Uh, the running back here, I think Bo Nix is in play. Um, sure. Yeah. But ultimately, uh, it's a you're you're now saying okay, is Keon Coleman capable of being the number one wide receiver? You've got a receiver they brought in, and Deontay Johnson still have Adam Thielen. Coleman could be the future. The Deontay Johnson deal, I think, is still just his old contract, and this is one year remaining. So I, I, Coleman's in play. I'm going to be the guy who reaches here on a running back, and I'm going to go ahead and take Jonathan Brooks. There you go. Nice. All right. So let me bring that back up for you, and let me know who you got here at the 203. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at our list here. Did, is, did Blake Corum go in the fourth round then? Yeah, that... he, this is a three-round mock, and Corum did not make it. And, wow. and you know, I'm not, I'm not surprised by that, to be honest. Yeah. Um, it's yeah. it's still, uh, you know, it's early. You know, I thought he would get drafted higher. Um, yeah. I felt like he was a lock for day three, or excuse me, um, day two into the third round at least. Um, yeah, yeah. I know, maybe it's because he's five seven, or three, I don't know. So, yeah, uh, I, I'll go with Benson here. I think that uh, right. the replacement for Barkley is not going to be a replacement because it's really hard to replace oh, yeah. Barkley. But but I think he's going to have all the opportunity in the world. So. All right, then. At yeah, I will go ahead and just take a shot on Keon Coleman. Uh, just. Just with being the 33rd overall pick, we've seen some success at that slot. T. Higgins was drafted at that slot. We've had some other guys be successful as the you know first pick in the second round, almost like an extension of the first round since the Panthers didn't have one. So they're they're kind of putting their stamp on this guy. Who do you got at the 205? Yeah, for me, I think at this point it's a, it's it's Bo Nix. Um, I think right. the competition competition there. He he'd have the ability to. To possibly beat out Gardner, but if he didn't, I don't think that would be the worst case scenario. So he could sit on the on the bench a little bit. So yeah, Knicks. Sweet. Uh, okay, so Jalen Polk went to the Colts. Makes me a little nervous. Um, I think uh, really all of these are players where it's a questionable situation. Uh, I'm I'm leaning. Xavier Leggett here. There you go. I like Xavier it. Xavier Leggett off the board. He's got some size and speed. Extremely late breakout age. Massive red flag. Uh, no, but, it's not. And, and I'll tell you why. Because okay. his parents, parents died early. So he's okay. got some off the field stuff that really, if you if you if you if you look at it a little bit deeper, he had a really trouble there in his high school and, and that going into college. And so, and he had some, there's some other stuff that happened in college too. So, so though his late breakout age is a factor, I don't think it's a factor because all the stuff that he's overcome, man, he's, he's high on my board. So I, I wholeheartedly, he was going to uh, awesome. be my next pick if you didn't take him. So. That's another good story. I love that, man. Yeah. I need to, yeah, I need to look into that, but that's incredible. So there you go. That's something that we need some context on because he's got everything else working for him, and people are just wondering about the late breakout age. Uh, so that's great. Yeah, you this may be the outside reason looking in. I was thinking that maybe he's waiting for Rattler to get there and needed a quarterback or something. But go ahead. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There are some scheme changes and some some other things that happened there. Um, but but uh, he's he he he's a legit player, man. I think that he may not uh, he may be one of those. So back in the day, I don't know how long you've you've played fantasy, but back in the day, it used to be kind about of about 10, 12 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you, then you know, it used to be Actually, year, yeah. three, uh, year three is when the wide receivers broke out, right? Like now we have wide receivers break out right out of the gate, but but in the in the past, you used to wait till year three was really when you would see that, and part of that was coaching because they didn't let the 
the rookies get in place of veterans and there's some other, you know, some political uh-huh. stuff going on back then. But um, but I, I, I think he might be a year two, year three breakout because it may take him a little bit. But, uh, you know, especially in the Steelers, that'd be a crowded uh, wide receiver room. But I definitely think he's uh, somebody I'm going to I'm going to pick here. So this one may be a little bit. Um, um, I think this one I, I'm going to go Jalen okay. McMillan here. I'm going to go McMillan nice. over Polk. I, I am McMillan over Polk. Um, I think McMillan has some some talent that kept Odunze from breaking out until he got injured. Then all of a sudden you saw uh, Dunes, you know, and this isn't a knock on Dunes. I just think McMillan is a really, really good player. And, and him going to the Patriots, same concept, being able to grow uh, with with a young rookie quarterback and, and Daniels, I, I, I think that I would uh, – I definitely would take uh, take him here in the late second. So, I like it, um, and like you said, open competition for that wide receiver one role. I think even with Demario Douglas, uh, that's not enough for me to not think that there's a chance McMillan could take that role. Whereas a Jalen Polk, I, I just you know the commitment to Michael Pittman Jr. and you mentioned politics, you know that could be a progress stopper for Jalen Polk. Yeah. Uh, all right, so. I uh, absolutely love that. Jalen McMillan, I, early on in some of my other early rankings, I had McMillan over Polk for at least a couple months. But I like when I was kind of learning about Polk as a leader in that locker room. and But they've all been able to produce. I've seen some stats with McMillan, who's right there with Roma Dunze in, in some of those early seasons. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so... He was the I'm first like, read for a while there. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, he's, definitely, he's definitely right around that. So Absolutely. I'm really sad that Franklin's down here. I'm I'm trying to hit the button on him, but uh, it's tough with that that landing spot. So I'm going Ricky Parasol. Uh, if I can find him here, and just like uh, it was just that one catch for me. That's all I needed to see. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> the greatest catch of all time. <laughs> yeah, uh, he, he's uh, he's really smooth and um, got great hands, as I'm mentioning, and. It's just one of those things where he looks looks good every time that he's participating in some of these events and he's, he's showing out. I think he can definitely get a role in the NFL. And with the Jaguars landing spot, uh, it was only Gabe Davis that they brought in. They need someone to step in there. So maybe this is their future answer because Kirk, he had like surgery this past season and, and he's fully healthy. But mm-hmm. I'm just not sold on the weapons they have today being what they'll have in two seasons. Um. All right, two hundred nine, and we'll try to pick this up to get you out of here. Um, what do you What do you got for us at the two hundred nine? Um, at the two hundred nine, I think I'm going to go uh, Sanders. Um, he's the second oh, tight end yeah. in this league, but I mean, him going to the Commanders, there's, or you know, um, they 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 don't have. Um, oh, Actually, we oh. got uh, Senate at, in round two at the bottom of round two as a second tight end. Oh no! Yeah, no. I was talking about the commander's situation in the tight end room. Oh um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, I I like him more than just a blocking tight end. He's a big, big, giant target. Um, I know that Brock Bowers is is light years ahead of him as far as a prospect goes, but uh, but I, I definitely don't mind him in this in this upcoming draft and this being a tight end premium. Um, I, uh, I I like the I, I like the swing in the second round here on on Sanders. Yeah, I like it too. Um, so that leaves me with an option here to just go ahead and, yeah, I'm going to take Ben Sennett, uh, tight end option for us in the second round, just, you know, based on the draft capital, I've been seeing him mocked pretty highly. Mm-hmm. And like I said, he had a good average up the target. I had him over Kate Stover at first. I had Sanders. Um, I think I still have Sanders higher in my rankings uh, because, you know, I went to Texas. I've, I've seen a lot of Sanders. I thought he had great hands. There's so many games where he was basically he had the most yards and receptions on the team, uh, maybe even over the course of the whole season. Maybe it's just the dynamic of the players that they had. But that, that was a top four team in college. He was a really good prospect. And it was only the combine that kind of lowered the view of him in the community's eyes. Yep. Yeah, um, exactly. So I, I like that pick. And who do you got here at the two eleven? I'm going to go with um, competition for Garrett Wilson. Um, I'm going to go the other okay. Wilson, Roman, 
Rollman. Nice. So, yeah, I, li I like that uh, that swing here. Um, Aaron Rodgers can produce um, wide receivers, so I, th I think that would be a, a fun, easy pick there at the end of the second here for me. Yeah, I like it. Uh, all around, he was looking pretty good. So I'm, I am struggling between Polk and someone else I mentioned. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Let me go ahead and take Polk off the board here. Oh, okay. That's one of your, one of your guys. You know, you have many chances yeah. to get the whole Washington team. <laughs> I know, man. I, I could have, but uh, yeah, um, no, that's right. okay. We're going into the third round. We, we talked about Polk plenty. So who do you got for the 301? Yeah, this is somebody that I haven't really reviewed, but just draft capital-wise, I think I would probably take a swing at a running back here. I don't like the Braylon Allen landing because I'm, I'm a big Jonathan Taylor guy. I, yeah. I don't think he's going to get on the field much. You're going um, for him. Yeah. I'm, <laughs> uh, no, I'm not going to go for him. I'm oh. going to go Mac, Max Milton. Um, oh, all right. So you're going yeah, – yeah, yeah, I mean – He's going to the Falcons. He's going to have a – a relatively, I mean, there's there's competition there with Eckler and and um, and uh, uh, Brian Robinson, but uh, but I, but but I I, I think that uh, wait, Max Milton, we got to the Falcons here. Yeah. Oh, he's okay. on the Falcons. Oh, he's a Bijan. No, so never mind. Bijan and Tyler uh, Algier. Okay, that's that's my one do over. I'm not. I'm All not right. taking. Uh, my bad. I, I read that wrong. I'm actually going to go Jalen Wright then. Um, Nice. I'm gonna take a running back shot. I'm gonna go Jalen Wright. That um, was the best move you could have made. Yeah. Um, and if you don't mind, I believe that there's some teams where you can follow patterns, and I keep seeing the Rams always have a different RB one, like season to season. I don't know what mm -hmm. that is, um, and this could just be another season where someone else ends up being RB one because it's not like there's a lot of draft capital behind Kyron, and yeah. even though I just traded for Kyron, and I would hate for that to happen. We just don't know with the Rams, and once they get a guy that they like, they'll just ride with them. And this guy has yeah. great speed and everything. There's a there's a hot hand mentality and, and exactly and system mentality. I, I still think Kyron is safe, but if there's a window that opens, I think Wright could definitely sneak in there and, and take up take some take some yummies from him. Take yeah, I'm gonna stick it, I'm gonna take I'm gonna take a Troy Franklin here out of the second round. Don't love the landing spot, uh, maybe. AJ Brown's gone in the future, but don't love the landing spot. I don't have much to say about it. I, I like the player, though. Um, you know, most players that get 1,300 yards in, in college from the wide receiver position um, end up getting a good shot in the NFL. And, and we've seen some production as far as the hit rate goes uh, when yeah. you ha meet that threshold. So I'm just going off of the talent there. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a good shot in the third. I'm not a big Franklin guy um, in general um, because he's a duck. No, um, because <laughs> <laughs> I, I just um, watching a lot of the Pac-12 this last year, um, RIP Pac-12. Um, you know, I there was just a lot of games where I saw Franklin just kind of, you know, um, do what he did at the combine, really, like just ran some funky routes or just had some weird feet movement. And so I'm, I'm a little bit hesitant on him more so than others. But uh, sorry, I know we're, we're, we're moving along here. So I'll go with. Um, let's see. So did Bucky. No, uh, no, we didn't get any other uh, running backs other than Max Melton and man. Braylon Allen in in this draft. All, you know, only four were drafted, I believe. So. Uh. So, yeah, you know, five. We have Jalen Wright. Well, I'll start from the top. It was Benson, Max Melton, then Braylon Allen, then Jonathan Brooks, then Jalen Wright. So really wow. weird. And this yeah. is from CBS Sports, you know, but yeah. it's also the running back position. So it's, no it's one's weird, actually going to be surprised. <laughs> it's a weird class, yeah. Um, so I'm going to go Corley then. Um, you know, Browns, they have D, D – no, they don't. Did they trade him? I'm trying to remember. They've got Cooper. They've got – they just got, got uh, Judy, and they still oh, have they Elijah Moore. As, as, as they trade away option. DPJ. Um, yeah, I'm still going to go Corley. I think there's a, there's enough there. Um, I like Malachi. I, I like some of the stuff that Malachi offers, and um, I, I think if Watson can stay healthy, um, I, and I don't know what is up with the running game there in, in Cleveland. It's always going to be decent, but uh, I, I think there might be some some room there for Corley to, you know, to move forward. So. Yeah, and you know, still a second rounder, so I like the pick. Mm -hmm. uh, so that is all of the players in the second round of this mock and the first uh, round. So I am going to 
uh, take a look here at, um, you know, pretty much I'm going to go with uh, 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 Jermaine Burton, who was a number one wide receiver for uh, Alabama and Mm -hmm. spent some time with Georgia. So, you know, I think he has some talent. Uh, yeah. You know, had some off the field issues. And I, you know, I try to under, make people understand why people are falling sometimes. And uh, you know, see, you know, the coaching staff are going to have to determine. Hey, is this guy that can you know have a good head on the shoulders, stuff like that? But if he does, he did have the talent. And with C.J. Stroud and the Texans, that could be that could hit. I, I just see it as another one that's kind of buried right now. But until they extend a Nico Collins, there is a chance that eventually Burton could do something. Um, but just attached to the offense. That's really all that is. Uh, well, what do you from got one, for it? From oh, one yeah. Alabama to a transfer Alabama. Uh, I'm going to go Baker. Uh, right. Javon Baker, I'll, 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 I'll take a swing at him here in the third round. I, I like his size. I like, you know, some, some of the stuff from him. So I, I, I don't mind, uh, I don't mind the, the, the landing spot there with, uh, with Kyler. So I, I think I'd go uh, Baker. Yeah. And I'm going to, go with the chiefs wide receiver we're, you know we're gonna, we didn't, neither one of us reached i don't think i'm gonna go devontez walker tez walker goes to the chiefs in yeah. the third round so not someone that we need to reach on in the first round that, that's kind of insane but at this point i'll, I'll take a shot at him here who do you got for us at the 307 yeah let's see here um Falling along at home. Let's see. I'm going to switch my screen. Sorry. Come on. Switch over. All there. good. So we didn't have. And I'm fine with, you know, some running backs shots take, taken, right? You know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I think at this point I would probably take a a, um, a Marshawn Lloyd or a, a Quan. Uh, I shouldn't have said uh, it. I think that, yeah, I think either one of those is kind of there on my list. I, I'll go with uh, Lloyd just because I know that. Um, he's somebody that you enjoy, so I like to watch you suffer. <laughs> so well, thanks for that. Thanks for that. Yeah, um, nice so yeah, good. that's who I took oh. in that uh, in the other mock uh, live. So you already knew I was on to him. Uh, yeah, and and if it's just fourth round, that's almost equivalent to them being drafted in the third round into yeah. a bad situation. It's just so hard to take this Braylon Allen and Max Melton pick. It's it's like, what do I do with this? Yeah, it's so tough. It's just a, it's uh, so it's so high draft capital for established running backs. Like I, I don't. I mean, I know that we're using this mock, but that's just kind of a weird, weird landing yeah. spot for those guys, in my opinion. I don't know why the Colts would use third round capital when you have. Uh, but anyway, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go <laughs> ahead and do. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna. I don't know if he's shaking it up. I mean, guy got third round capital is not a great hit weight rate for quarterbacks. Spencer Rattler to the Falcons, the current quarterbacks coming off of an Achilles tear. You know, he'll, he'll probably be healthy. We'll see. Rattler's got an arm. Mm-hmm. So that's really what I'm basing that on. Uh, you know, this is insurance for them. Maybe he doesn't play. But just taking a shot here in Superflex. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I, I think that I would um, – my shot here is going to be McCaffrey. Uh, name value name value aside, I really like McCaffrey and what he could do for, for a team. And depending on where he would have landed here, I think that uh, – McCaffrey's a fun name, fun stash there at the, the back end. He's got obviously the Dane Cachet, but he's 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 a pretty hard worker, just like his uh, his relative there, uh, Christian uh, CNC, and and so I, I think that's where I'm going to go. That's a great pick, Luke McCaffrey off the board. Oh, I added him to my cute box, and there we go. So for my pick. I, you know, we're running out of guys here to you, so it's gonna have to just be based on talent for some of these picks. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I'm willing to take a shot on Blake Corum at this spot. Sure, he is, uh, you know, it, it could be a goal line back, and he might end up on a situation where he's just, you know, getting some of those short yardage carries. Uh, but without the landing spot, there's not too much else to add to it uh, on a national championship winning team. You, you know, he'll get a shot somewhere. What do you got at the three eleven? So at the three eleven, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm going to lean. I think at this point, I would probably take Braylon Allen. If I have right. JT, I think you know it's my backup. If I don't have JT, 
it's a trading piece to the JT owner that I could, you know, I could possibly do something later on if there's injury or something, something happens. So yeah, I think Braylon Allen's a good, good spot here at 311. All right. And with this final pick in this round, uh, I'm, I think I'm willing to take a shot on, uh, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and get a pick out of the way. I'll get, I'll take Cade Stover, uh, or sorry. Uh, wait a second. Well, no, no, no. What? Oh, I can't believe this guy's still here. What are we doing? I think uh -oh. we both made a huge mistake. Do you know who I'm about to take? <laughs> Tight end, uh -oh. Theo Johnson. Oh, yeah. He goes in the third round to the Bengals, the 80th pick. They recently signed Mike Gusecki for one year. Yeah. I think this could be the uh, new replacement. Theo Johnson had the number one uh, relative athletic score, according to Math Bomb. Great follow. And uh, I'll take him here off the board at the end of the third round. Yeah. Steal of the draft. <laughs> Steal of the draft. Yeah, that's a good one. So who do you got here to start the fourth round? I'm going to go Bucky Irving. All right. Um, so late late in the drafts like this, I, I typically will load up with just running backs and tight ends. Um, oftentimes I don't I don't take – so I miss out on the pukas of the world a lot of times unless there's something I really, really like or a, a landing spot I really like. But, but typically I'm just – I'm going for that instant value with my third and fourth. Um, uh, tight ends aren't necessarily instant value, so the, that they'll ha happen to be on my taxi squad. But but running yeah. backs can normally get you something, you know, right out of the gate. So I, I, I took your approach. When Audric Estime, he had one of the highest PFF grades of any of the running backs in this class. He's yeah. probably the slowest back, but I'll just I'll just lean on that and see what happens. Yeah, it's like. Uh, Joy Bell, but food of yeah. Um, Brendan Rice is my uh, so I just said that I was okay. going to take running back, but I think uh, <laughs> Rice. Uh, I think Rice has enough upside um, and and work ethic, and obviously the name cachet where he's going to stick around for a little bit. So yeah, he's got some good size, so I, I like him too. Uh, I will take Isaac Arendo, uh, just with the size yes. that he has. He was my next. And I uh, just hope he gets a good landing spot or just an opportunity in the season. Yeah. Um, I think okay, uh, in that same – same. I'm going to go Ray, Mr. Ray Ooh, Davis. Ray Davis. Yeah. I like it. Kind of a bowling ball type player. Yeah, yeah. No Sproles action, you know. Yeah. Uh, still a lot of good uh, – or still some picks here, but I'm going to go Malik Washington. He's on my sleeper list. I like Malik Washington. Uh, team six is loading up on receivers. Who do you got here with the next pick? Uh, I think I'm going to go Cade Stover. Um, All right. I, yeah, third round draft capital to the Niners. Yeah. They actually drafted a tight end in the third round last season. Uh, Latu, Cameron Latu, I think. And yep. he did, I don't think he, I think he was injured and it didn't play. Cade Stover, and it's almost over. Okay, let's <laughs> go with my pick. And let me get this, let me get this out of the way. Okay, so let's just let, let's just go ahead and uh, you know I'm scared, but I'll take Max Meltz. Oh, he's not even in the player pool. I don't think <laughs> Max Meltz is he in the? Oh, come on. Uh, well, can't can't even take Max Melton. Uh, that's okay. We will go ahead and take Dylan Lobb. Pass catching yeah. back out of New Hampshire. Like it. Uh, who do you yeah. who do you got here at the uh, ninth spot in the fourth round? Uh, I think I'm going to go Frank Frank Gore Jr. Jr. There we go. Junior. I like it. Frank Gore Jr. and I guess I should have been looking at my rankings this whole time, but <laughs> <laughs> whatever. Uh, Kind of going off the top of the dome for the most part. I know most of these players. I'm going to go even deeper. And I've been doing this off my phone. Let me make sure I can find. Is Tyrone Tracy in here? No, there's there's some players missing on here. Yeah, they don't okay, have Tyrone Tracy there. Jackson. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I'll take Isaiah Davis. Yeah, I'll take Isaiah Davis. Okay. Who do you got for your final pick of this draft? I think it's between Johnny Wilson and Shipley for me. I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to stay to Brian. I'm going to stick with the running back. I'll go Shipley. 
Yeah, that made it a little bit harder for me. Oh, uh, actually, you know what? I think I would have went Joe Milton there, but uh, no, but we're we're it. doing it. We're doing it, Joe Milton. Yeah, let's get him. Love that arm, man. He has he can oh. enter the league as the, one of the strongest, at least in top five strongest arm in the league. Yeah, um, and I was so happy to do that so I could just get ship please. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that was my know, look at some that more was my players. Yeah, look at some more players added to this draft. But yeah, yeah that'll do it for us. Um, good uh, mock draft, and I will move our cameras here. Really appreciate it. And um, yeah, man, thank you so much for jumping on the stream with us here today. I uh, was gonna see if you got a, any minute to just review your your own team or if you want to say which team might have had the best pick because i guess we could have been thinking of it from each team's perspective we weren't we weren't really we were just going bpa um but if you were to have caleb williams mcconkey jalen wright and brucky irving out of the one hole would you feel pretty good walking out of a draft like that oh yeah oh yeah i'd, I'd feel great and and i will say that i don't draft for need i always draft bpa so um so this would be that's how i would have dressed so the way that we walk through this process is really how I draft anyways. Of course, I'm also looking to trade out and do some things like that. But but in general, that's that that's a, it's a good mock on how how I actually draft. So very chaotic and, um, you know, like I'm I'm crazy behind the scenes, but we'll, we'll get it done. So. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I like my Marvin Harrison pick. Obviously, Brooks, who's a starter for Dallas. I like that. Um, mm -hmm. Troy Frank, the pre-draft, I would have thought he would have gone higher, so it would feel like a, a bit of a value in the the three two, um, and then estimate you know just a stab there. Oh, got, busting out the hat. Sorry, Franklin. <laughs> I mean, you guys got two two W's against Franklin. Y'all didn't yeah, give those did. boys a chance. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and is any of these teams you know uh, one where you're like, hey man, it would, it would be if the draft went this way, I'd actually prefer to. Maybe I shouldn't say trade back, but, you know, the one of these spots is a little bit more valuable. And I'm thinking later, like, I think we've already had the, the eighth spot kind of in a tier, knowing a quarterback, a first-round quarterback could be there or someone reaches and then you've got a Bowers or a Dunze sitting at eight. But does the ninth or tenth or eleventh or twelfth pick become any more um, – become boosted than, than before uh, this draft? Yeah, I mean, I would say Brian Tom uh, Thompson at – uh, pick 10 there that's okay you know that's pretty and, and this is realistically something that can happen with McCaffrey slipping up there or Penix and and or Knicks you know one of those two getting drafted a little bit higher hopping up there you could get BTJ at you know pick 10 and that I mean I, I'm especially with this mock he was going to Arizona he would have been one of the lone targets you know he that, that's it's a pretty good fit there so I would love that pick. I would love 110. I think if I if I had to pick a team that I liked the most, I um I think I lean. Oh man, I I, I really like team six. I like even though it's all wide receivers, I just love the 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 I like Dunes, I love uh Laggett um and his accent, you know. Um <laughs> You know, I, I I like that that setup. I, I like my team. You know, the the, the one spot because uh, oh, it's yeah. really hard to, you know, I, I, with Lad going where he would have landed and Caleb. I really like that as well. Um, I like your team outside of that Franklin pick, but uh, yeah, <laughs> <that's good>. um, <laughs> no third round is is great great capital for him. Um, awesome. And then in tight end premium, man. I mean, Brock Bowers one seven. We talked about it earlier on the stream. We've got two tight end start, two tight ends, so he could go up as early as oh, like yeah. one three, one one four for me. So, um, so I love that pick, and then come back with McMillan there, uh, who I have over Polk. Um, I, I think that that's a that's a great play. So, uh, Polk awesome. went later in this draft, but typically in most mock startups that you're doing right now are rookie yeah. drafts. Polk typically goes ahead of McMillan. So, well, guys, thank y'all so much for watching. We're going to get out of here. You can find Big D at FFD Big D on Twitter. And you can find me at Dynasty F Key on Twitter, as uh, well as I'm Dynasty Football Key and other places. Check out the Discord, check out uh, the Patreon, uh, support the channel. And uh, really, uh, you can find some of these episodes on Spotify as well, uh, uh, TikTok. So, uh, yeah follow the channel thank everyone for watching and uh, really it's been a great night everyone have a great friday and rest of your weekend and hope to see you in the next video